YR folks, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, this is uh, YR. This is going to be a wild uh, uh, thing. I'm just getting the screen geography on my laptop. Uh, we're interviewing Punk Boy in San yeah, Fran. Uh, I'm going to get you in. You just heard him. I'm going to do a 3D mix <laughs> Punk Boy. Who did what the? Oh and, my goodness, uh, that was pretty awful. Uh, I have never seen. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to show that to you. Okay. Yeah, you can. Well, you can. <laughs> it just, I'm just saying it was the greenest thing that I've ever seen come out of my nose. Oh, oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a nice yeah. level. Okay, good. Uh, that's one way to that. Send it to NASA, they might check it for oh, intelligence. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> DNA, DNA pizza color. No, mine was like bright yellow green usually, like the like grass color. But no, it was more like the shade color in that picture. Um, um, so instead of you, I just see a, an ad for a Microsoft Surface Pro. Okay. All right. And then I can cover that ad up with the live stream chat. There we go. Yes, that would be uh, just north of Santa Clara and Sunnyvale, and you know, going up the going up the peninsula. It's like San Jose, Santa Clara, Sunnyvale, Mountain View, uh, Redwood City, maybe, and then uh, Cupertino and all those other places. They're all over that way. Okay, take two. I had my audio down. Uh, one more time. We're here live. Coast to coast, I'm here in the East Coast in Elsa Booktug of uh, New Brunswick here on the Atlantic Coast, and we're live with Punk Boy, sorry about that audio thing, uh, with uh, Punk Boy in San Fran, and uh, we're here to talk about his arrest uh, Tuesday night, two days ago, outside of Google's uh, world headquarters in Mountain View, California, IA in Silicon Valley. And uh, it was an Occupy uh, Google uh, protest, an occupation. And, uh, you know, I must say, Punk Boy, I am absolute, the context of this interview, you know, we've interviewed you numerous times on this channel, but the context of you being arrested for doing your job as a journalist, uh, it, it just sickens me. Uh, tell us about... You know, let's start at the beginning with the context to what the Occupy Google occupation was about, about well, in net neutrality I, and all that. As I drop there, hold on. What I have is uh, is the flyer, one of the flyers that they were giving out to the Google employees, because it was less of a protest as it was more um, sort of encouraging Google to, to, you know, we were there sort of supporting them like, hey, we see that you have been being supportive of net neutrality in the media and in the press, but... You know, not since 2012 and the SOPA PIPA protests that Aaron Schwartz had, uh, you know, brought upon by grassroots methods um, and basically got all of the giant internet companies to go black on a certain day to protest the, the Stop Online Piracy Act and the Protect, internet, uh, Protect Intellectual Property Act, I think is what PIPA stood for, um, back in 2012. But that was the last time that they'd actually taken any action. And that was even sort of, you know, spurred by, like, a lot of pressure being put on all those companies by... By, their, by the constituents of, of, of the whole country, like rising up and saying, hey, we don't want you to be able to shut down any website just because of, you know, copyright infringement, because we know that that's going to be misused. And so after the 7 million signatures that, uh, that Google got from a petition that they put up on their own site, you know, them and Wikipedia and all of the big sites in 2012 went dark for a day to protest that. And it put so much pressure on the politicians that they dropped that censorship act. That was a um, SOPA, right? That was the SOPA PIPA things back in 2012. That was the last time Google's actually stuck their neck out for anything on net neutrality, um, and that that was less specific net neutrality, but it was you know it was sort of an end run around it that they were using copyright as the as the shield 
um, in those laws. And uh, <clears throat> Aaron Schwartz helped get that together, and that's why the government went after him. And we're going after him for that stupid uh, downloading case that he ended up um, giving up, like, in the ultimate way and, and taking his own life because they'd run him out of money. They had, you know, just taken up all of his time and he, he just knew that it wasn't going to end. And that was why he took his own life about a year, a little over a year ago. Um, and that was the last time Google had actually done anything proactively to, to help stop what, what, what the government's been trying to do to the internet. And so this was basically saying like, Hey, we see that, you know, in the public, like you're signing petitions, you went with your with 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 whatever group that was just recently to the FCC and you know put your name behind you know Yahoo and Netflix and and Google and a but and a bunch of other companies signed a letter saying that they support net neutrality but they're not actually doing anything like they could like they could be like they did in 2012 to 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 actually support net neutrality. So we were basically there to inform their employees like, hey, we know your employer says that they support it, but they haven't been doing anything. So, you know, we support them. We want them to support us and to, to actually do some more things proactively. Like we know that they absolutely have the ability to. Um, I was reading the stats last night. I don't have the exact numbers, but basically it goes something like they put out maybe, what is it, uh, $700,000, somewhere way under you know, uh, under a million dollars to support like actual things that have been going on to to defend net neutrality, while AT and T and Verizon and the other companies have put out like you know a hundred uh, was it two hundred million or something to to get their way with the uh, with the laws, and you know not even monetarily are they supporting it. I mean, they put out a little tiny bit, but it's pocket change to them, and uh, you know so they were there, and you know the response from the employees during most part of the day. I mean, during, during the whole time that, that the employees were, were on campus going back and forth and talking to us. Um, I mean, I wasn't doing the outreach because I was just there covering it. But So they were basically giving out things like this, which is the uh, why are we here to them. And it says, we are here in order to commence a serious, honest dialogue on the issue of net neutrality and how to move forward towards an internet that is free and open. We hope to stand with you and move towards the same goal, to maintain the internet as it was meant to be and as it used to be up until uh, they started uh, fiddling with it. Um, a neutral playing ground without discrimination or censorship. This effort has not been undertaken alone. People have People all over the country are on our side, drafting petitions, spreading information, holding rallies, appealing to their Congress members. With your help, we can do much more. We recall the various protests against SOPA and PIPA in 2012. The blackout of the Google logo was a commendable act of resistance against the two monstrous bills and, and the infringement that they imposed. The petition on your site alone gathered 7 million signatures. We invite all those concerned in maintaining the Internet as a free and horizontal communication platform to join us here at 6 p.m. every day for a general assembly to discuss how to move forward in defending internet freedom. We're also preparing a major day of online protests in support of net neutrality. Websites can stage content blackouts and redirect visitors to petitions and comment forums, instructing the FCC and others to maintain net neutrality. Users can creatively flood the web with content and urge policymakers to uphold principles that keep the internet an open and free uh, public common. As the online commons is threatened, the occupation aims to build a space for preserving free and open internet. Come together to maintain this open space for public discourse and social change. And for you know a good portion of the day until the majority of the employees were off and went home about I don't know, seven eight o'clock. Um, you know during the day Google sent down like bottled water and stuff. Nobody actually came down as a representative to talk to anybody, but they pretended like they were supportive and sent, you know, bottled water, I think was the extent of uh, the support that they gave because it was very, very warm in Mountain View. That's, it's, you know, it's between San Francisco and the South Bay and the South Bay was probably a good 10, 15 degrees warmer. <coughs> um, what time did you yeah. guys get there on last Tuesday on the uh, 24th? Well, see, we, we left, we probably got there about 1230-ish, some, sometime between 12 and 1. I know that my car, so basically, I had no idea what the actual thing was that was going on. I knew that it was going to be a, some sort of net neutrality protest. Uh, I was kept in the dark, as were most of the people who went. Um, but so I was just told to meet up in Berkeley, uh, that we were doing a net neutrality protest in front of possibly a government building, was what I was told. Um, and so I met up, we actually met in Berkeley, uh, at the Berkeley Bowl, which is like an organic uh, community uh, co-op grocery store. Um, and then we carpooled from there over to Google headquarters, which for me was kind of odd because I went from like where I live in San Francisco 
I took the tr transit all the way across to Berkeley just to come back past my house and go down south below it. <laughs> I was like, y'all could have just picked me up on the way. Come on now. So yeah, we got there about one, you know, when, when they, when, as soon as we got there and everybody had arrived, like the people started unpacking their stuff and just putting the banners up <laughs> and, you know, on their quad sort of like right as soon as you walk into the property um i didn't stream so much in the in the beginning because i was trying i'm going to put together my stuff from my hd footage um i don't know if i can actually just broadcast it out to you guys um oh yeah i can i can i can do capture with minicam i can show you some of my footage too you'll be the exclusive first people to see it so give me a, so while i'm talking I'll, I'll get it set up here um Oh, I could do it that way. Oh, good, because Minicam will uh, will eat up my will eat my CPU. So I'll just do the share screen. All right, let me kill Minicam before it comes up. Then. Oh, that's fine. I can just do a full screen of it anyway. All right, so let me go kill Minicam before it eats up all my CPU. All right, my task manager. Close myself and call, where is it, share screens, share my screen, start, all right, are you seeing me now, my screen, open up an explore window, I'll grab it here, Get rid of save changes to no. All right. And in my all right, so I can open it. Seems this. like we're eating up some bandwidth. It's, it's it, we're having a pop up that says internet connection problem. You're still coming in, but it's really stressed. All right, well, it's not going to be a lot of little things to read, but. You have mini cams on, right? Maybe you should turn that off. No, I turned mini cam off. Oh, I could disconnect my webcam in the meantime, I think. Does that help? Uh, yep, for now. Although, yep. although it's not moving, so it's going to look really clear while it's not moving. But So here's this on the way there. <laughs> All right, so this is this is the Google security people basically being really confused as to why these people had just shown up and, uh, you know, wait, do they have a contact here? Did they have permission to do this and they forgot to tell us? I mean, they're really confounded as to why these people just thought that they had the, the right to just show up and put up tarps and banners and tables and, and hand out a bunch of stuff. So I might mention that uh, the Google campus is a very odd, like Disneylandish kind of place. Like, just everywhere you look, they have these Google bicycles that. Now, are, now one question: Why has, do you call it Google Campus? Let me pause. Were you saying something, or is that just a video? Because there's no way I can stop the audio from coming into my ear at the same time I'm listening to you. We have right no there? audio. Yeah, but we have no audio. You have no audio for me. Just your audio, but not the video audio. Oh, yeah, that's that's what I figured. Uh, if you want the audio, I'd have to go through Minicam because I don't think that the screen share just does, just does video. It doesn't do audio, which is why I'm sort of narrating it. Um, so, yeah, the, there's them putting up the banner there. And let's try the next one. So the whole time that they're setting up all this stuff, they're busy with their, you know, Android phones, like recording everything that they're doing, possibly for a later lawsuit. I have no idea, um, but they're still confused. And like the people that the people that must be the higher ups in their security team are like, you know, just as baffled as to what these people are doing here. And I'm guessing the the guy in the black shirt must be like the the, the second tier of their uh, of their security detail. The blue shirts are probably the lowest on the rung, I would guess. Uh, the black shirts are probably the next step up, and then they report to somebody that they've got either over the phone or through their walkie talkies. I think they're, yeah, they do look like they've got FM or VHF uh, walkie talkies on them. 
Yeah, yeah. There's those guys. And I tried to get most of the discussions that they had between, uh, between, between the, uh, occupiers and the, and the security detail. Now, why um, do you so, call it, why so, do you call it Google campus? Uh, well, it's actually called the Google Plex is the, is the nickname that sort of, uh, but yeah, they call it the Google campus. It's not like it's a university or anything. So I don't know why it's called that, but I've heard it referred to as the Google campus and the Google Plex. So what you're seeing here is this is, uh, there's a driveway that, uh, so when you hear about all the protests against the Google buses, the transportation buses that bring the people who live up in San Francisco and the peninsula down to Google, uh, you know, so that they can live up here and not have to pay for their commute. Um, so that driveway that these two people are walking across in the front of the screen uh, is where those buses come through. And so when the cops showed up the first time during the day, we were told that uh, – I don't know if you can see my mouse. Can you see the mouse at all? Okay. So this here uh, is what we were told by the daytime police was public – was a public area. Um, and behind – uh, just past here, you see this sort of uh, uh, marsh-looking brush. It's because most of this all used to be, before they filled it in, was part of the wetlands of the bay. Um, and just beyond here, you can kind of see, well, that's maybe a telephone pole. But just beyond these trees here is what they call the Shoreline Amphitheater. It's like, it's a music venue uh, down on the peninsula. So basically across the street from that music venue is is all like Google area here. But we were told that this was a public park behind here and that this was the public area Um but what what I think I've learned later is that it's possibly a public private partnership, like like uh, like the park in uh, in New York, where where the uh, Brookfield Properties owns uh, Zuccotti yeah, Park. The Canadian it's sort of it's sort Canadian of like Zuccotti Park there. Um, is what I'm thinking is probably what the case is, and I still have to look up the actuality of it. I don't know exactly where I'm going to get the like property stuff, but I guess I have to go to Santa Clara County to look and see how it how it's actually designated. But but what the cops told us during the day was that this was the public area that we were technically, you know, even without their permission, that we were sort of allowed to be in, um, and that behind me, which is what you where you saw them setting up, was on Google Campus Googleplex, like private private property. Um, but they were sort of given a waiver and told that, you know, as long as everything stays cool, like it was for the, for the majority of the day, like that they weren't going to ask them to leave and that they were fine with it. And they sent us down bottled water. Um, so, and so that they've also got, you could probably see it somewhere. There's a speaker where they were broadcasting podcasts that talked about net neutralities. Um, okay, we'll go next. It's also Gay Pride Month here, which is why you see the rainbow OO on their Google logo, sort of pink washing themselves. But as far as I know, they've always actually given uh, domestic partner benefits even before they had to. Um, so they have been in front of that. Um, there you see Clark uh, live streaming there in his wheelchair. Uh, Clark Sullivan, yeah. Um, so the, what's funny, too, is that the protesters had chosen to make defend net neutrality T-shirts or defend the Internet or whatever they said. They had chosen to make them blue. And I don't think that they realized that the security detail were wearing blue shirts as well. So it's kind of hard to distinguish them sometimes. Although there's were T-shirts and the security are wearing polo shirts. OK, so this is still before the police arrived the first time they've got their so and what isn't kind of nice about the, the their Google properties is that most of the landscaping is all done with native plants. So at least they they were concerned about the impact they were having on the on the the ecology there. So almost all this is all native plants and what used to grow there back when it was a wetland. So you see the like sort of cattails and stuff. Um, and there you see tents. I'll be posting up a lot of pictures of uh, of occupied Google with the tents right with their uh, with their Google logo from that building right there. Um, that's Yale Chenoff. She's uh, used to be a reporter for the San Francisco Bay Guardian. Now she's working for, oh, I forget the name of the, it's it's a new news blog here in the Bay Area. Uh, she's writing for them now. Um, so this is the first site we saw of any uh, police presence because they had, they had told everyone, like, if you don't leave now, we'll be forced to call Mountain View PD. So there's Mountain View PD showing up for the first time. That guy's actually not one of the two that came to talk to us. He must have been just like a third one as backup or some such. Um, 
I mean, the security people weren't really rude. They weren't really mean. They're just kind of, you know, matter of factly like, look, we're just intermediaries here between what the people on the phone are telling us. And, and, you know, as much as the people that were there protesting were telling them like, you know, well, then can't you get the people who you're talking to on the phone to come down and talk to us? That's all we want is a dialogue. And not a, at, at no point did anybody from management or anybody in a supervisory role, except for maybe those black shirts from security who are supervising the blue shirts. And when I say colored shirts it reminds me just of nypd with the black shirts and the white shirts um this guy here is singing stand up for your rights and what's funny and i took a lot of pictures of it okay so there's them informing the first uh, black and whites to arrive on the scene of what was going on and you could see there's this guy here with the glasses he's actually a really really cool guy and he's the guy who came and talked to us um, and his sergeant, who's the uh, older, sort of bigger guy right there. And both of them were very, very sweet, very, very cordial. You know, some of the nicer uh, cops that I've had to deal with in all this time. And he, I mean, look at, the fa look at his face as he's coming up to talk to everybody. He's just like, he's a really, really nice guy. Um, Good and, cop, yeah, bad cop. Let's see. Yeah, um, let me find. I could tell you what the bigger guy's name was because he gave me his card. The other guy had forgotten his cards. Um, but so the bigger guy, the sergeant, his name is Ken Leal, L-E-A-L, -E police sergeant of City of Mountain View. He's the f uh, sergeant in the field operations division. Mountain View PD. So they keep trying to ask for like, so who's the leader of this? Who's in charge? And of course, everybody's like, nobody. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pause that for a second so I could hear you guys. So, any questions as to what's going on so far? As, uh, as I'm showing you all this stuff, I'm there's the live chat. The live chat is quite busy. Uh, uh, Punk boy, just so people know, does have the live chat on his screen. So, uh, oh, uh, not while I'm looking at the video. Hold on, let me pull it up. All right, yeah, because since it's Windows 8, like the where I'm showing you the video from, you're seeing my screen. So, yeah, I don't have the live chat up if you don't see it on your screen. But now I see others. Oh, Annie saying, "Re." She loves me. Uh, they said the same thing to Kelly Thomas as they smothered him to death. Uh, and I want to give a big shout out to Rise PDX and Global Rev for mirroring this feed. Thank you, Rise. Thank you, Global Rev. Yar. Yeah. Global Rev, who picked me up on my very first day streaming when I didn't even know anybody was watching. When I just did it to uh, to turn it on and and uh, save in the cloud because I had no space on my phone. Yes. Yeah, so let's see. So, okay. So basically, I know everybody who's chatting up right there. All right. So let's go back to the video. And uh, so there's those guys. This is like a whole five minutes. I think we were up to maybe. Oh shoot. Picture library. Up. We'll go back. Nope. That's the extras. That's the stuff I cut out. I gotta go back here and do it this way. Cops. 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 Well, so uh, let's continue with what we were doing. That that looked great, uh, showing your footage. I'll, I'll just prompt you any questions from the live chat. All right. And, so uh, uh, ask away, folks. All right. Uh, oh, uh, Chicky says. Here, Chicky says advances, this is so. Uh, punk boy, Chicky says this is so high tech. Google should hire Punk boy. <laughs> Hey, and I'm streaming with an Android phone. You know, I, I'm a Google fanboy. Like, I, I, I do like Google, and I'm always pushing them to maintain their not being evil standpoint. So he's explaining to these guys here that, uh, you know, the one thing that they are in violation of is that the speaker is way too loud, uh, that the podcast that they're broadcasting is way too loud. He's like, we're not here to take any action. We're here to allow you guys to assert your First Amendment right and allow them to have their private property rights respected. So we're just here as an intermediary. We're not here to start a fight. We're, we're just making sure that the Constitution is upheld. However, there is an ordinance in the city uh, on broadcasting uh, amplified sound without a permit. And so I'm not jumping on that issue yet. But just to let you know, we're going to put that to the side for now. But we're waiting to hear from the, the manager of Google and the physical security manager, not just the guys that you guys have talked to out here, you know, that are, that are the lower downs. Um, but we know that from before they kind of facilitated protests here and brought them out water and everything, which they did do for us. And we want to stay out of it unless you guys, you know, unless something out happens to, 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 to stop that. But as long as you guys are doing what's within the law and is savory, like, you know, we're fine with it. And so our guys saying something like, 
you know, this is just fairly loud. You know, we'll try to keep this just louder than a normal voice. And it's not necessarily music, even though it is amplified sound, he says. So we'll try to keep it down a little bit. We're not trying to blast it at top volume to where it's going to interrupt the people who are working in the buildings. Um, Clark's got this whole interaction on his live stream also. And so he says, from me as an individual, that sounds very reasonable. He says, if there's a citizen's arrest or some other thing or something like that, he said, let's not put the cart in front of the horse, he says. I'm not running with the music thing. I'm not talk, talking about the Amplified Town. I'm just letting you guys know that it should stay low and uh, that Google will probably be much more reasonable as long as you keep it low. It says, but the boots on the ground, the men and women, his name is Canfield. He says, so all, everything you're saying is totally reasonable to us. What I did notice is that with my boom mic on top of the DSLR, um, it's sort of suspended uh, in rubber bands. That all of the noise that I get from the focusing, like the actual motor noise that I get when I don't have that on, is completely gone when I record with the. Uh, that's an old <laughs> filmmaker. That uh, that's an old filmmaker cool. trick. Yeah, suspended on rubber bands is so, the way to do it. What is he saying? So are you saying that they they may ask at a later time for you to take down the banners, but they're not asking that right now? He's like, I don't see that happening. He says, doesn't look like there's any major problems they have, but we'll just we're here to make sure that we can facilitate your protest. We're going to go and see if they have their security people to, like informed on the on what all the higher ups' decisions were, and. Uh, And that's Kyle. He's uh, explaining our position. Like, you know, we hope that the security team is just as as uh, copacetic with what's going on as the higher ups are, and that they leave us alone for the rest of the day, which, for the most part, they did uh, up until the employees went home. And I said, you know, he said their security guards are pretty dense because one of the security guards asked us what the hell net neutrality was. They had never heard of it. Which, you know, their security, they I don't expect them to be like tech gurus or are informed on current events. They're just there to be hired hired muscle, so goons. And let's see. Yeah, and she's explaining that it's not necessarily here to protest Google, but to try to get them to take more proactive action in uh in the fight for net neutrality. And I think that was pretty much it, what I covered there. He's going to have the guy who's uh, amplifying his uh, guitar, who's singing a bunch of protest songs. He's like, you know, we're fine. We're getting ready to head out. How long do you guys plan on staying? And there's already tents up, so it's implied that people planned on staying overnight. And so that's what the main gripe of the of the occupier were was that hey we put up tents you kept asking us how long we plan on staying we said we don't know it's indefinite at this point um, and that they at that point when they kept saying that they were fine with everything they were fine with everything so there there seemed to be not a meeting of the minds like the intention of the occupiers seemed to be out there and in front by them putting up tents saying hey you know we plan to sleep here is what the tents obviously meant. And Google seeming to take that as like, oh, tents, that this is obviously just a symbol of their protest as occupiers, that they have tents. But, you know, we don't we don't assume that they're going to stay the night, that that just must be symbols of their type of protest um, is what I think they, they think their stance is. Um, but I think the tents were obvious from the beginning that the, that the people were tending on staying overnight. But Google was pretending to not take it as that and to just think that that was a symbol of their protest is, is how I read that both sides were taking it. So there was never a meeting of the minds completely, although Google did allow it to go on for a good portion of the day, basically while their employees were there and able to see any scuffle that would happen. Like they were cool with it. But as soon as most of the, you know, 90 eight percent of the employees had gone home and there was just the skeleton crew that's there at night that was when their position changed and they told security that we were to go oh so this is this is very telling and i forgot that he had actually said this and he 
Uh, so somebody saying like, no matter what happens, like the press and the bloggers will stay till the last point of, that everybody else is gone to make sure everything's documented. And he's repeating that back to them. He's like, okay, so the press and the bloggers uh, will stay till the last point when everybody else is gone. And, he's, and, he's, and he says, okay, like he's fine with that. Like he gets that. And he says, okay, yes, he shakes, nods his head, yes. And he gives a thumbs up. He said, but there's not a like intended hard stop time he's asking and he says okay okay nods nods so he knew that i planned on staying until the end when when whatever happened was finished and done with and that i would be the last person to leave as as i was the only per as me and uh the the one other guy i'll show you uh, right there on the right hand side he was the other guy who was documenting with his uh with his camera i mean he didn't have a stated press pass like i do wear around my neck but that that shouldn't matter especially with uh well it hasn't passed through the it's passed through the house but not the senate here uh i forget the guy's name um i was just watching the thing the other day but he had gotten something passed through the conservative house that basically designates journalism as not a profession but an act so you're a journalist while you are in the process of of, of journalism um and let's hope that that actually gets signed by the Senate. I don't see them stalling it since it's the Democratic led led uh, Senate. But you know, that's it's, the kind of it's, California it's legislature. Right now, so everything seems to be the opposite of what it is. So it may be it may pass through the conservative through the conservative House and blocked in the in the in the Liberal Congress. I mean, in the Liberal uh, Senate, you never know. And that's in but, California. No, no, this this is federal. Like, and which one uh, act is that again? Oh, um, let me find the guy's name really quick. Um, somebody in the chat will probably know it before I do. Uh, amendment. Oh, Charlie Grabsky's on. Oh, hey, Charlie. Yeah, so it's amendment by, oh, he's the guy who was like, I know a quote from him. Hold on, if I just put and the direct And Dave is on from Santa Rosa, California. The Republicans... Want you to die quickly. There was a quote from him, so I'll find out what the amendment is named after him quickly. <coughs> Alan Grayson. So it's called the Grayson, the Grayson Amendment. And is it is that like a for net neutrality? Uh, no, it's it's a journalism uh, thing. Uh, G R. What is it? Uh, G R A Y. Grayson Amendment. And it states, uh, and this passed through the conservative house, which surprised the hell out of me how, how he was allowed to do that, considering he's trolling the uh, Republicans all the fucking time. Oh, Google's not showing my search now. Come on, Google, you could do it. I'm going to have to bring up DuckDuckGo in a second. Hold on. DuckDuckGo. Try it this way. Grayson Amendment. Aimed at protecting Fourth Amendment rights. Okay, so this is a 404. Jesus, I'm not able to get anything through here. Grayson.house.gov Media Center press release says Grayson Amendment aimed at protecting Fourth Amendment rights. Uh, basically, it's aimed at protecting uh, journalists, bloggers, everybody. So before where it had been like they could sort of interpret the First Amendment and the Fourth Amendment to only apply to like corporate journalists, like like was done to us a lot in LA and, and other places where they'd be like, well, you're not with a corporate news agency, so you're not really press. This specifically outlines that anyone involved in the act of journalism is a journalist, no matter who they are. Uh, it, it outlines that and then also says that those people are protected from having to divulge their sources and makes a special exception uh, makes a special uh, point to point out that WikiLeaks is a journalism agency in it, um, which was quite astounding that that got through the, the conservative house. Yeah. Um, so people like us and all of us citizen journalists, we would all specifically be protected by the Grayson Amendment. Which still, I don't know if it's actually gone to the Senate for a vote yet, but once it passes the Senate, then it goes before Obama to sign, and then that would go into law. Even though all this stuff is, is should be already considered law according to the Constitution, and it hasn't been respected that way. This is an amendment that, uh, that specifically carves out uh, the fact that all of us should be protected with that as well. All right, so next... This is like uh, early afternoon, eh? 
Uh, mid to, mid to late afternoon, I think. And so this guy's another employee who's like, you know, agreeing with all the stuff that we're there for. And like I said, 95% of the people who stopped to talk to people, uh, at the booth here, um, we're all supportive and they're just like, you know, the, the consensus seemed to be like, you know, we know they haven't been doing enough that they should be. And we are also thankful that you guys are here to push them in the right direction it was the consensus of all the employees who stopped. There seemed to also be a lot of out of town Google employees who were probably flown into town to uh, to attend the developers conference that, that that's going on here in San Francisco proper this week, um, where they're announcing all their you know the, like the like the Apple developers conference where they announced their software updates and you know the new version of Android and the new versions of all their software and stuff and what 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 the people who are going to be writing software and stuff for it are going to need to know to to run through their APIs and whatnot. Um, so there seemed to be a lot of out of town Google employees who just thought that it was that it was fun to like see protesters there, and we're taking their pictures with the protesters in the background and smiling and, and waving at us and stuff. Um, so yes, there's that. Um, I think I just got a lot of like you know B roll footage for when I put together the video. They're making another banner that just stayed on the ground there like that. Um, there's their little media tent that they kept putting out press releases and, and tweeting and stuff like that. And uh, that's my B-roll footage. I wanted to get a couple of shots of, you know, their little trap wire type cameras. So I think those are cameras up there. I'm not quite certain because those ones are kind of gigantic and they look sort of odd. So I'm not sure why those ones look different than just all the rest of the sort of like little tiny ball security camera things. That... You know why? Because they, they look like 3D cameras. Really? With two lenses. They, I mean, so, if you had a more close up, uh, it looks like 3D cameras, which is pretty high tech security. Okay, so what this is is this is what was called the the free and open internet garden of disclosure, and it has sort of all the like conspiracy theory things all uh, like written down in little cards. Um, yeah, I've got some some close ups of what some of the things said on it. And then what I'm hearing in the background is like the, it got really windy at some at a few points too. It was really warm. It was probably about 80 degrees, 80, 85 degrees. And, you know, with a, with a fierce breeze through most of the day. And there you see the tents. Those were up for a good part of the day. Actually, they, they weren't taken down until, until they dismantled the whole camp uh, as the police were there. And we're all ready to, to leave with it. And there's them holding down the fort while the wind is kick it, kicking up. Uh, uh, did see. they like occupy when they uh, evicted people? Did they uh, return the tents or just trash them? Um, okay, so there were a few people that weren't arrested. There was one guy who had, who was busy the whole time putting stuff into his van, who had, who had transported a good part, portion of the stuff down there. Um, he was allowed to leave, and he he was the one who they allowed to. I mean, they, the cops were pretty decent for the most part. Um, other than the whole arresting us part, I mean, they were very nice about it. And one of the cops after after I was like handcuffed, and you know, they put all my stuff. And you you hear me saying, "Can I at least put my camera in my bag?" And the guy goes, "It's too late for that." That means it, it's too late for me to do that. But he put it in there very nicely. They listened to my instructions. I was like, okay, the boom mic's got to be taken off of the DSLR and put it back in this protective case. And, you know, they followed all my instructions. They put all my stuff away and nicely. And they told none you to stuff, relax. You know, unless they just pulled the, the cards out and, and copied them. Like, none of my footage was destroyed. I mean, you're seeing it all now. So, like, I, I don't have much fault with the cops other than they should not have been arresting me. And I'm still I'm going to fight that. Um, okay, a technical but, but question. The, now, all this stuff is stuff you live streamed. Correct or no? Uh, no, this is all HD footage. Some of some of a lot of the, the police interaction at, at night got live streamed, uh, but the part where they arrested me, I didn't have time to, to actually. Uh, I had to. I would have had to change lenses uh, to to be able to film the people that were being arrested, which is all I thought I was doing when I turned the camera back on. I didn't expect to be arrested at that point. And um, and and uh, in the past, we've talked about this when you're live streaming, even if they had grabbed the phone from you, it'll automatically be saved at uh, Ustream, correct? Yeah, and, and uh, so what it was, was I was tethered to my regular cell phone, I was tethered to my T-Mobile phone, and uh, what do you call it? And so so that was on tethering, and I was using the Global Rev Samsung Galaxy Cam, which is, you know, basically just a the sort of point and shoot with a big long telephoto lens on it that runs Android, which allows me to stream and have a zoom lens and be able to zoom in on stuff with a 20 times optical zoom. 
And so what I was camera zoomed in. What camera is that again? What camera? It's a Galaxy camera. It's the first generation, so it's kind of the crappier of the three models they put out because it's hey, the very makes first that? one. Samsung. Um, they also do make a Galaxy, uh, Samsung Galaxy, I forget what it's called, but it's the actually phone. the phone that, that does have, the, that does have the, the voice line on it built into it. Too, that yeah, they sell. I, I have the Galaxy it, S4 so Android phone. I love it. Yeah, but this one actually has literally like a giant telephoto lens that goes out of the camera and, you know, like six inches out when you're zoomed in completely. Uh, hold on, you're sharing my screen. I'll, I'll just bring it up and show it to you. So that this Valley Wag is actually Gawker. It's, it's Gawker's Silicon Valley uh, blog. Uh, so, yeah, I was, on, I was on the front page of, their, of Gawker that morning because uh, it goes here, 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 and then like my live stream footage. What's... And we okay, showed so, that last so night. That. Thanks for their resting me. And if you look at, let's see, it's been a good, what, how many hours now? I've got 14,315 views on that, on that one minute of arrest footage. <laughs> and then, and then this is the unlabeled one that, um, where remember I told you where it, it saves a default of, of uh, a default name. So that's the one that saves as a default. So there's another 250 views on that. <laughs> <laughs> which brings it up to like 14,560 uh, some odd views. Yeah, we played that 30 something minute, the second last one, and that one minute one last night. Actually, you know what? Uh, let me play that one minute one right now. Uh, okay. give, give me uh, a sec. Uh, I'm going to bring it up, and so we'll play with the audio. Uh, oh, duh. Um, okay, so this is sort of what the camera is that I was using that I was zoomed in on because you'll see the very beginning of that footage you're about to show uh, is really, really close to them. Yeah, it looks just like this. This is the one I have. So it looks like that, and then if you look at the back of it, it's Android. It's completely Android. Well, this might be the second version, but it, it looks pretty identical to that. Okay, hold yeah, on. So I'm, just, I'm just queuing up the other video. Uh Somebody's at my door. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. I'm just documenting. Okay. I'm going to press You're under arrest here. for trespassing, actually. So uh, I'm going to take I, this can sir, just can I go just the camera. Can You're I just put it in my backpack? You're, no, You're under arrest, sir. sir it's, it's too late. It's too late. Just relax, okay? I don't explain the cockpit. Just relax. Just relax. Uh, can you give me my phone so I could check the balance before I send you? So we just played that footage from uh, that one minute footage. We just played that, uh, just so you know. ER. Just relax, son. Just relax. That's, that's sick. So what did they do after that? All right. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. All right. Let me see if I 
so maybe, uh, turn your camera back on and let's see you uh, i just want to we can look at some more footage uh, after all right let me uh speakers come here microphone i did not because ever since i got up i've been i've been on my interview just take him with you to go to get pizza and he should be fine and i did i was not able to move when i got up didn't you remember i couldn't move stereo mix Yeah, so that was uh, Tuesday night, uh, June twenty uh, fourth. Uh, that was around eleven forty uh, local time. I'm gathering, right? That was just before midnight. Okay, yeah, and uh, the uh, we're we're live with an interview from uh, Punk Boy and Sam Fran. Uh, my name is Dee Shanger. I'm a modern live stream director here at Occupy Toronto. I'm here in. Elsa Booktug on the east coast of Canada in New Brunswick. So this is a coast-to-coast -coast interview, and uh, Punk Boy certainly is a regular on our channel. He's just setting up uh, his Skype feed. We we're just mirroring his screen, and here he comes, and we're going to ask him a few more questions. Uh, what followed immediately after the arrest, uh, and uh, yeah, he was uh, in jail for a while. Yar, something's happening. Yar, there we go. How you doing, bro? Yar, and your audio. Yar. Yeah, so that was outside of Google's world headquarters in Mountain View, California, A, which is yeah, in, hear me? Yeah, which is in Silicon Valley, just outside of San Fran. Can, Can you hear me now? now? Yep, yeah, loud and okay. clear there, bro. Well, uh, I want to show me my video on the screen. Like, I should be able to see my, my local video here, and it's not showing me. We had just showed it while you went to the door. It was the one-minute video. Uh, we showed that in its entirety. How do, I, how do I bring up my local video again on the screen? Like, all I see is your still picture. And it, I know that I'm sending video, but it's not showing it to me on my local screen. <laughs> on the screen now, right? Yeah, but I don't see myself here on the, uh, you know, in my Skype window. Oh, uh, I don't know why that is. I don't know. Uh, but you're coming in loud and clear, bro. Audio right. and well, video. You see me. I just have to center. hope that I'm centered here. <laughs> yep, you are. You are. Uh, I don't know. Uh, check, check the... the uh, bank. Check the drop-up menu at the bottom of the, your Skype. Just roll your mouse over your... View, view contacts, recent files sent to receive, Skype home, call phones, default view, full screen. Nope, all that does is change the size. Let me do exit here. Home. No. I don't know how to reactivate. I think I accidentally closed it, and then I can't figure out how to get it to come back on. Well, you can always pop out the video at Occupy Toronto. You're coming in loud and clear, even though that's laggy, all right? Yeah, uh, that'll, yeah, that'll, yep, my, that'll lead to this. this would just be like a local without having to go through the internet. Weird. I don't know, but uh, all I can say is you're coming in literally loud and clear, dear bro. All right. Well, then let me... Oh, here we go. Hold on. No, view, view, add, send files, send screen, send contacts, add people, show dial pad, no. Share screen, send contacts, send files, that's not doing it. Oops. They should, no, no, this should do it. This oh, should do now it. I see you. Yeah, yeah I still don't see me. me. Let, Let me try it. My video is turned off. off. Now turn, turn my video up. back on. It still, still didn't bring it up. Nope, it's still not showing me. Oh well, I don't know what it did. You just did, it's now 16.9, which is good. It was 4.3 last time, which is strange. Oh yeah, it's because it's sending from the Microsoft camera, which is the HD one. It's looking it's really sharp. Really bright. Let me set that to, that was probably way too bright. There we go, this should probably be normal color. How about under Although view, the tell. drop down menu at the top, where beside tools and call, view? No. Oh, you got many cams on. 
Uh, mini cam's not on, so. Well, you got huge bug eyes, bro. <laughs> oh, huge bug eyes. I don't know how that happened. It was a Mountain View PD. Oh, hey, what the? It's Bozo now. I, hey, where's where's a hey, Bozo? Oh, wait, there he is. Okay, let's see. Yeah, up. Yeah, I don't know why it won't show me my uh, my own picture. Is that your husband in the background from Buffalo? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's my husband from Buffalo over there. Hey, right. how's downtown Chictawaga? <laughs> uh, I got change the call. One moment, uh, sounds, no, audio setting, it's at speakers, here we go, speech. Now he should be able to hear you. Nope. There you go. Uh, I, I was just saying, uh, how, how's downtown Chictawaga? Uh, I, I always thought uh, the strangest sounding city was the Pew. You know, it being in Toronto in the 70s and Happy 80s, wa watching Eyewitness News, you know, all you hear is fire in downtown Chictawaga. It seems like there's always a fire in downtown Chictawaga. In Buffalo, New York. Uh, yeah, we're, we're having bandwidth trouble here, too. Let me turn. <clears throat> yeah, we're having a little bit of bandwidth issues here. Let's see. Okay, we got time. So, count balance. I'm just... Checking to make sure I have money so that he can go get us some food. Oh. Uh, never mind. <laughs> Today's Thursday, right? Yes. Okay, so just told me that, well, there's twelve bucks left in there. Oh. So yeah, we well, you could go get Arnold. you could go get uh they're on sale at CBS for six bucks. Real yes, real DiGiorno. Real DiGiorno Monsanto pizza. Uh oh. <laughs> Connection between you is too slow. Do you want to turn video off? It says. Uh, yeah, so I'm having bandwidth issues here, too. No, we're being censored. Um, yeah, so just go get that. And uh, you should have... Uh, oh, I gave you the card already. I put it on the bed or something. It's in there. Because I don't have it. I must have put it on the bed. You sure? Because I, I borrowed it this morning. I know, and I took it out just a minute ago to give to you, and I said, go get me a slice of pizza, and I threw it on the bed. Oh. Um, so what you should do is give them all this cash first before you put the rest on the card and get a 12-pack of soda, too. It's $3 for a 12-pack, plus tax and California deposit, whatever. It's not cold. Okay, then just go get the pizza. Just don't go get something because I'm starving. I had a thing of chat with an online representative. Oh, I'm on that Samsung page, and they're like, you've been on our page a long time. Can I help you? No. Well, this From is, Jane. This is Cinema Verite That's at weird. its finest. Yeah, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to put in... Let me see if I can get the live chat to come up. Nope, the live chat went crap. Now you're out let of me. focus. I'm out of focus? Oh, let me just do that, and that should clear it up. All right, let me go back to the live stream page, Occupy Toronto chat, live stream chat, and resolving host. I was going to put a picture of that. Uh, oh, good. My Denny's from yesterday went through. Here we go. Live stream chat and... Hey, Patty you know, Beers is uh, on. Kim Beers. Which now. one? Charlie's there. Okay. Patty Beers is on. Ha hey, so now, this, Patty. So this is a link to the camera that I was using. All right, so that link I just posted is what the camera looks like that I was using. Actually, I could show it to you now. It's this thing. And so what it does is... Yeah, so the, it's the Galaxy camera. So it runs Android, basically. So the back screen here turns into, you know, what looks like an Android phone, but it's basically just like a tablet, sort of. And it runs Android, and therefore you can put Ustream on it. And, you know, once you're connected with Wi-Fi... You can use the the lens here. See, I didn't have much battery power left, but, but I think I have the, one last battery in my backpack somewhere. I haven't recharged everything since I got home. Oh, but yeah, so you do this and you log in. I'll do my little pattern thingy. And then, all right, so this is like the camera.
Okay, go on. Okay, so what this, so there you see the lens all popped out um, when the camera's on. And they, what you do is what you hit into mode and then go to expert mode. So if you're used to an actual DSLR, it will do this thing here. And there you've got all your regular f-stop settings and your ISO and exposure and everything that looks just like a, it looks just like an SLR. Uh, or if you don't know enough about actual camera settings, you can just go up here to auto and then, you know, then everything's done for you. Uh, but you know, let me let's see, turn this and go out the window here. Uh, I don't know if you could see that, but like there's the neighbors. And if I get over here, but you probably can't see without killing my camera, uh, you can still see it. But if I go out the window, you can see it. You can see how how far I get all the way out there. But yeah, that, that's that's 21 times out the window. And then I push the button halfway; it'll focus on it. Uh, trying to get you to, like I have to go a little further to be able to show the. Uh, but you could go like right up in the neighbor's window. Like there's that, if you could see it, like that house is actually. So that house, right? I'll take a picture here, and I'll just that'll just bring. I'll, I'm just gonna pick, uh, take a picture and then bring the picture up. All right. So this here that I just took a picture of. This is the house across the street with the 21 times zoom. There you go. So like that's that's way across the street, and I'm like you know I'm one house length in from the street already here. So like, that's how close I can get up on the neighbors across the way. So that's what I was using when, when you see like the beginning of that one minute footage, you see, uh, you see the, the, the kid, the, the girl, I think it was two girls who went over to, get, to be arrested, but you see those two girls getting arrested there. And, uh, Oh, there's the CBS five news van. They showed up for like two minutes just to do their little live at 10 o'clock thing. And then they took off. Why weren't they trespassing when they showed up? And then there's just pictures, pictures, pictures. I really like those Google Google uh, bicycles that they had. I, I took a lot of pictures of them. And let's see, there's some boys that were playing Frisbee. I was trying to get little artsy pictures of the Google logo. Uh, let's see. Yeah, just pictures, pictures, pictures of people. There's Kyle. More Frisbee people. Oh, and then Monsanto March. So, yeah, so that's what I was using. And so there's actually a couple of stories that were written about it that said, uh, you know, then they nabbed Punk Boy NSF and, uh, and wrestled him to the ground, I think is the way the Big Guardian put it. He, he did not wrestle me to the ground. He sort of, he kept saying, relax, because I've got a pinched nerve in my neck, and it's almost better today after another night's sleep. But it was basically, a, you know, it was hurting really bad. And so when he went to go twist my arm to put it backwards for the for the handcuffs, it was pushing on the pinched nerve, which, which was shooting, you know, pain down, down my spine. And so I kept trying to turn it the other way to be like, no, you shouldn't turn it that way because it hurts. Um... And D saying, yes, Chick, it's a landmark 8 0 vote in favor of the First Nations people's treaty rights. That's good. Um, yeah, so it was like they turned it the wrong way, and I kept resisting against that because he was pushing on my pinched nerve. And that's why the guy kept saying, relax, relax. And then the footage is actually cut off before I got to explain to him why I couldn't turn my neck like that. And he didn't seem to care. He just wanted to make sure that I got into the handcuffs and then they couldn't get the guy's key would not get the right handcuff off and it took like three cops with three different handcuff keys to get it off so they could just put the zip ties on to secure us for a transport over to county jail um but the one cop who at the end of all my like you know process not, not the processing in the jail but the processing on the spot there when they were just like getting names and addresses and filling out their pre-booking report like he said to me like you know thank you for being such a nice cordial person or something i think he said to me because the other people were like, uh, you know, I don't always agree with everything that occupiers do. And there were a couple of them that were just like shouting like how, how rough they were being with everybody. And I'm like, they're not actually being that rough. They were actually kind of decent for the most part. And like every protest I've ever been to on the peninsula, like the day that we that they chartered a bus and we went down from 
board of directors member to board of directors members' houses, like their actual private houses to protest in front of their house of the, the people who run uh, Wells Fargo Bank, like their, their board of directors. There was a whole tour of protests of their houses. Uh, Whoa, like where was those, this? Like, that was great. Oh, oh, this was a while ago. This was uh, probably mid to late 2012, I would think. Um, you know, still still before Occupy uh, was completely, not completely killed off, but, you know, killed off for the most part here in the city. Um, it had to have been before May 1st then, I think. Uh, but it was Occ Occupy Bernal who, uh, they, they still are around and, you know, they were never like a big protest presence. What Occupy Bernal, which is Bernal Heights, which is one of the neighborhoods here in San Francisco, they've always centered on foreclosure stuff they've always kept on message of occupying the banks in wall street so like they've always been um they've, they've always been on message with that and so one of their one of their actual protests because usually it's just helping people under underwater with their house helping people in foreclosure um doing all that kind of stuff and, and being their advocates um is one of the only actual protests i'd seen bernal occupy bernal do and they chartered a bus and took a you know a couple dozen of us um around to their houses I would have to see. Um, I did live stream a good portion of that, so it would be in my archive. Um, let me see if I could find any reference to it and see if. Okay, so it's Occupy Bernal. Uh, Occupy Bernal, Wells Fargo bus tour. Know, let's see if that is enough to bring it up. Yeah, so it would have been, oh, here we go. They wrote it up on Crooks and Liars here. It would have been April of 2012. So that's what I thought right before May Day, which was when, we, which was when Occupy lost a lot of their support in, in the city. When Wells Fargo, coincidentally, were the people who uh, uh, hired, you know, fake black clock goons to, uh, to destroy one of the neighborhoods here. While, while uh, you know, uh, tricking us into marching with them and then, them hijacking the march and turning it into a black block destructive uh, thing. And, in, uh, in Oakland? Uh, no, this was in San Francisco. It was in uh, along Valencia Street, which is one of the gentrified neighborhoods that's gone from being like a, a sort of artist enclave to a bunch of uh, hipsters with too much money in their pocket who worked in the tech industry. I think they call that uh, that area of the mission now Tech Español. <laughs> Oh, so this was in in, in uh, cooperation with Ace, which is uh, uh, one of the what is Ace exactly again? ACCE. Uh, Tricky uh, has a question for you on the live chat. Punk boy, yes, did, did, did you think for a moment you would get arrested at Google? I did not. Um, I, I think in hindsight that uh, one of the sergeants who came specifically up to talk to me and who like just kept informing me that I too was trespassing and I said, well, I have the First Amendment and as long as they're here, I'm going to be documenting it because I'm not going to allow them to be left alone without any without any you know video evidence as to what is going to happen to them. And I think I have every right to do that. And he just like, well, let me just inform you that you too would be trespassing and I'm not saying you're going to get arrested, but I'm not saying you're not. Or something to that effect, I think, was what he kept saying. And I, I think I have that much recorded somewhere. Um, but I think he was sort of trying to lead me on to the fact that if it, if people get arrested, that like they're not going to think they're not going to treat me any differently. I think was in hindsight what I think he was trying to say, but I was not hearing it because I'm like, you know, I'm press. You're not going to arrest press. Otherwise, you're going to have a huge scandal on your hands. And, you know, so that's what they're going to get is a huge scandal on their hands. Now, correct me uh, if I'm wrong, but I think this is the first time you've been arrested. Uh, in this stuff, yeah. I mean, I've had one of the arrests that uh, that I had tossed out a long time ago. I just happened to be somewhere at the wrong place at the wrong time and and had got that expunged from my record. But yeah, this is this will be the first thing that stays on my record unless I can get it t tossed out, and I plan on getting it tossed out. So it was Occupy Bernal with the Alliance of Californians for Community Empowerment, which is ACE. Um, and I... I uh, and he thinks we're going to have an earthquake right now uh, because Philbert would not come out from under the bed. Yeah. That's how he used to always behave. And now we have the bed back. So he's going to start hiding under the bed again because we've had it up as a couch for so long. And now he's got the bed back to hide under. Don't you remember that's what he used to do? Has it been that long that you've been without the bed flat, the futon? All right. So I'll put a, here, I'll put a link to the article that talks about that, that, uh, tour that we did of their homes. On the live chat? Uh, uh, if I can get that up again, I think I did. Oh, you hadn't left yet? 
Oh, uh, yeah. Unless you're going to get, um, unless you're getting soda. What lawyer is going to court with me? I don't think Stanley has the time. He's busy. Uh, he's busy with his own case right now, and I don't want to p- pile anything else on him. I'll, if anybody, I'll probably get Jay Lederman. I, I still have to talk to him, uh, but he's the other guy who represents Anonymous pro uh, pro bono, and uh, so I, I don't think he would have any problem t- taking on my case, provided he's not like overburdened with a bunch of stuff right now. And I don't think he is. I mean, at least from his pro bono stuff, I don't know of any other cases he's he's actively taking. It's it's a, if you just get pepperoni, it's like three fifty. You can get two slices as long as and if you, unless you get have a pineapple, then that'll be four plus three fifty. I think it's fifty cents a topping or something, and three dollars for cheese. Sorry. Always, <laughs> a, always a fun time with Punk Boy. <laughs> Get some light going, and I need something to drink. Is there anything cold in here? Uh, oh well, if you want to take some to work, you might not want to get that much pizza. You can get a pack when you get to work, and then pay him after midnight. Okay. I'm about to open this Shack soda here, Shaquille O'Neal soda. It's this uh, soda shack with Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, it's Arizona iced, Arizona drinks, but they actually make them with sugar and honey instead of corn syrup. And a bunch of and a bunch of stuff in the lip that I have to wipe out now. It looks like little, it looks like little pieces of flour. Right, so this, one, this one is strawberry cream soda, which I've not had in a very long time. Uh, we'll see if they have lots of color. I don't think they have a lot of coloring in it, too. It's actually an all-natural soda. Carbonated water, sugar, honey, natural flavor, bourbon vanilla extract, natural strawberry flavor, citric acid, and vegetable juice for color. Doesn't seem too awful for a soda. And they've not colored it with a bunch of red stuff to make it look red for a strawberry cream soda. It looks more like just a regular cream soda. Salute! <laughs> it's cold and it's sweet. That's all I care about right now. Yes. All right. So, okay. So, um, we're at the point where, uh, okay, as uh, Chicky, uh, you call her Annie? Yeah. The, well, Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, so we're at the point where you never thought for a second that you'd be arrested at Google. You were in the middle of answering that. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, especially from the, the, I mean, you saw how smiley and nice the guy was that had informed us that we were all cool and everything was copacetic. Uh, the cop that was there during the day, like, you know, it seemed like they were all really cool. Uh, and Charlie's asking me separately when I'm done with you to let him know about something or other. Uh, to let him know. Uh, let me, let me, okay. Nope, oh, it's not showing me the most recent one for some reason. Anyway, let me get rid of that. And recent, what did he say? It said, uh, oh, about tomorrow's show. Yeah, so. Yeah, so Charlie, uh, he's wanting to know if I, what I'm doing about tomorrow's show. I'm uh, all the time. I thought I'd have to prepare for it again. Like last week, I was sick for most of it, and I ended up sleeping because I mean, you hear that I'm still like getting over this cold, and I think it spread to be like a weird sinus infection thing. Um, and I'm hoping that this green stuff isn't from being in jail because the only other time I've been in jail, I happened to get uh, methicillin resistant staph on my hand and it actually spread to my bloodstream and almost killed me. So the whole time I'm in jail, like luckily they let me keep my, my sort of hoodie sweater and my, and my jacket. Not that it was really that cold in there, but that way I was able to like cover my hands and not touch anything while I was in the jail to keep from catching any weird bugs. Cause that's where a lot of those super bugs breed is in jails and prison, jail, prisons and hospitals. And uh, I was hoping not to catch any of those again, and I don't think I have. I haven't gotten any weird things popping off on my skin. So, but they they like take your jacket and stuff for the for the mug shot, um, and for something else they were doing. Oh yeah, they made me take it off while they were doing my blood pressure and and, and uh, triaging me. So I hope they 
it didn't look like it was a disposable uh, arm cuff like they like they actually do use in hospitals now and i hope they wipe it off with alcohol in between everybody but i doubt they do so i'm keeping an eye on everything to make sure nothing weird pops up because it smelled pretty rank in that in that county jail yikes So, uh, so from the moment when we showed that last video, uh, the one minute video, the one you got arrested, uh, so what did they do? Take you into the car? Or did they search you before they put uh, you in and take you in? And what happened basically after that? Yeah, I mean, as, as soon as they put you in cuffs, like they, they ask you repeatedly, like every time they, they pat you down, you know, do you have anything sharp? Do you have any weapons? Do you have this? And of course, like I, I don't leave the house going to any of these things with anything that could be considered contraband. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll leave, we'll leave it at that. Cause there was something I forgot, but they never discovered it. And I didn't even realize I had it on me. Uh, nothing really bad and illegal, or at least nothing that should be considered illegal, but, uh, unfortunately is, um, we'll just link it to Amber Lyons and we'll say that it's something that she's devoting her journalism cause to now. Uh, I had something to that effect with me, uh, that they did not even notice, uh, even though they had apparently looked over everything they had on me and, and saw it and didn't realize what it was. Um, but so, yeah, I, I escaped free and clear for that. And it, it's something I consider medicine that they don't. Um, and it's not pot, but along that line. So, yeah, I, I'm so lucky they didn't catch me with that because I think that's considered some, something much worse. Uh, and I'm incriminating myself. Uh -huh. No, but uh, what do you call it? So, yeah, so they, they, they patted me down. They handcuffed me. They put me over... The, to the other guy to fill out the, the pre-booking forms. Um, I've got my forms here. So I've got one that should be the pre-booking form. So this It's the NSA is right. going with us. Oh, now I'm back to the wrong camera. Hold on. So what I did was I answered with the Windows 8. There's two versions of Skype I have on here. I have Skype for desktop and Skype for Windows 8. So I answered with Skype for Windows 8. Let me go to options, camera. Oh, it won't let me change from the integrated webcam, probably because the Skype for desktop is hogging the other one, I would guess. Want me to call you back? Uh, no, I'll, I'll just angle it down, down here. No, I'll just call you back. Answer with the other is one. It, is, is it showing in 69? It looks like it's 69. 69, but it's really washed out. It's totally different. The other one was better. Let yeah, me call you right better. back. Let me call you right back. All right. All right. All right well, well, give me a second, second to uh, to free up and close the Skype for desktop then. Uh, how do I... Oh, yeah. Since we're not doing group, I could do that. Okay. Quit Skype. And... Yeah, so that's Punk Boy in San Francisco, uh, for those of you who missed it. Uh, welcome, Patty. Welcome, Brookside. Welcome, uh, Annie. Welcome, Rise. Welcome, Sunday. We have a full house here tonight. Uh, Punk Boy was arrested uh, two, last Tuesday night, two days ago, on <coughs> Market, uh, June 24th. I'm eating pizza as well. Um, uh, and uh, Punk Boy will be eating his pizza soon enough. And... Um, so we're interviewing Punk Boy, and uh, there we go, back. Alrighty. All right, you seeing me now? Coming All in right. loud and clear. All right, and it's, it's, for some reason it's still not showing me video ever again. Oh well, I hope it's not lightning doorbell, because uh, there would be Punk Boy in something. I hope he never moves, hugging, rise, something, something, change is good. Okay, I don't know what they're talking about in the chat. All right, so, uh, so yeah, so one part that confuses me is it says 821-822-PC, which I think means penal code. Uh, and then it says felony affidavit, yes. But then under the, in the, the citation here, it says code, penal code uh, 3B or 3.6, whatever that is. I guess it would be 3, 
B. It says 602 uh, section zero trespass bail 1000. And it says FMIC and then they designate M, which I'm assuming means felony, misdemeanor, infraction, or citation. Uh, and then it says court 43460, which if you look on the back, 43460 corresponds to 43460 Palo Alto Mountain View Municipal Court, which is weird because the actual arresting officer was a Los Gatos, no, Los Altos, uh, which I think must be part of that Palo Alto Mountain View Municipal. I think Los Altos, because because of budget cuts, a lot of the different peninsula cities have merged their fire and uh, police departments together. So I think it's Mountain View, Los Altos, Palo Alto are sort of a joint agency now for police. Uh, so that's what that corresponds to. And then it says warrant number. I didn't have a warrant, obviously. Rise ask, oh, wait, Rise ask, what code violation number again? <coughs> uh, 602 section zero, trespass. Just standard trespassing, I'm, I'm guessing. And then uh, possessions like wallet, $9 in cash on me, uh, jacket blue, sweater blue, uh, shirt black, pants camo, although he spelled camo with a K. Uh, shoes brown, miscellaneous items, uh, California ID something, I don't know, his chicken scratch there. Um, so it would have been $1,000 bail, which is what, $100 bond if somebody wanted to get me out quicker. But I don't think they would have been t able to. Oh, okay, so here's the uh, notice to appear. So this is my, you know, they, they said that you won't get anything else in the mail. This is your notice. Show up or you'll have a warrant out, a uh, bench warrant. So it's 602 section zero, trespass, uh, colon, closed lands. So apparently because, so apparently they're charging us with trespassing on the public private park area because it closes at dusk. Uh, one one question. Uh, Annie says they, they misspelled it. They should say you were Google passing. <laughs> yes, there's my driver's license number. So so the felony affidavit, I'm wondering if that applies more to because because uh, Charlie will know that we're that we were dealing with uh, uh, that professor who was arrested at uh, uh, they were occupying the mayor's office in Albuquerque because of the police stuff. And so there was a affidavit that's sworn to by the officer to be true under felony perjury law. So I'm wondering if that is what that little checkbox means, not that it's a felony that they're talking about for the for the person being arrested, but that you're I think that's basically a checkbox that's saying, do you swear under penalty of perjury and, and, a, and a penalty of a felony that the stuff that you're swearing to in this in this is uh, is true to the best of your knowledge. So I think that's maybe what that checkbox means because a lot of us are confused. We're just above, you know, what we're, what we're charged with violating. It says felony affidavit, yes, no, and they click yes. So that'd be my guess is that the officer is sw swearing to under penalty of a felony that, that what he's filling in is true. Um, that's my only explanation for why they click yes, why they, why they tick yes on a felony affidavit box. And I don't see it explained to you anywhere on the front or the back. The back is just agency codes, uh, abbreviations for eye color, you know, generation, junior, senior, first, second, third, penal code, one, intoxication, two, medical aid, arrest for more than one offense, three, four, outstanding warrants. These are all just different things that they could have marked on the other side. So, yeah, $1,000 bail, which is, you know, nothing for them. Uh, distribution, white booking, green property record, white ID. So yeah, they did They did take my backpack with all my equipment separate from me because I guess only your personal effects go with you to the jail. So that was my keys, my phone, which he was nice enough when I, when I said, like, I don't want it to be dead when I get it back. Can you shut it off? And he allowed me to tell him how to hold down the button and then say power off and say okay. Like, they, 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 were, they were pretty damn cool. I mean... I haven't been arrested before, but I've seen how they've treated other people being arrested, and, and you know, I was I was treated pretty okay. I was not wrestled to the ground like the Bay Guardian thought from the footage. <laughs> when I read that, I was like, oh, now I seem like more of a badass. But you know, and, and so so leave it to leave it to to the to the cops to choose a day when I've been completely cordial to everybody the entire day. Like of all the days I thought I would ever be arrested, I was I was reviewing for the first time like my my Occupy LA raid coverage. And I was all up in their cheese in, in their Kool Aid. Like I was screaming, calling them names. 
and like they're telling me you go this way and then I went that way and then the other cop goes no go back over there and I'm like fuck you I just got told by the other dude to be over here and now you're telling me go over there I'm going to be arrested so what this is your guys little fucked up plan you Nazis you know saying shit like that to them over and over and over the guy goes sir you're going to be arrested and I'm like fuck you then arrest me then to the guy like none of those times did they ever touch me but the day that I'm completely nice to all of them and don't do anything wrong really like that's the day they choose to have me arrested thanks Google <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, you know, the the whole... And, and so what what happened next? Uh, I guess they took your photo, so now they got your mug officially in the system? Yeah, yeah I was processed with everyone else, like six boys and four girls, I think, uh, of the, the ten of us that were arrested. So we go to county, they... You know, they, they do the whole like stupid bullshit the whole time while they're while you're in jail. Like everybody, you know, put your line, turn your head this way. Everybody against the wall. Then they move you into the next room. Like everybody stand here against this line against the, with your face against the wall. And then uh, then they sit you in the main like holding area with, with the seats where you're just awaiting for your your medical triage where they ask you if you're going to be, you know, if, if you're here longer than tonight. Like, do you need any medication? And I told them, yes, I need all this other stuff. Um, okay, and Annie's putting up a quote, uh, a link in here uh, to 602. California Penal Code Section 602, except as provided in subdivision U or V. So mine was a 602 with zero. Oh, your video's down. Six. Video's down. Uh, well, your audio's fine. Video's down. There we go. I don't know why. Oh, you know why? Because sometimes that camera shorts. That's probably all that was. Okay, so it was. It had a. Oh, which I thought was a zero, but it looks like these are letters afterwards. Okay, so yeah, so it's it's an O, not a zero. And it would be, let's see, I'll turn it up loud enough and I'll have uh, I'll have my browser read it to us. Uh, turn it up, read selected text. Oh, hold on. It's coming through. All right, stop, 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 stop. Stop reading. Okay. I'm going to switch my speaker. Playback devices. Earphones? No. Uh, speaker. Here we go. Default device. Default communication device. Okay. Now you should be able to hear it through. My Refusing or failing to leave land, real property, or structures belonging to or lawfully occupied by another and not open to the general public upon being requested to leave by 1. A peace officer at the request of the owner the owner's agent, or the person in lawful possession, and upon being informed by the peace officer that he or she is acting at the request of the owner, the owner's agent, or the person in lawful possession, or, two, the owner, the owner's agent, or the person in lawful possession, the owner, the owner's agent, or the person in lawful possession shall make a separate request to the peace officer on each occasion when the peace officer's assistance in dealing with a trespass is requested. However, a single request for a peace officer's assistance may be made to cover a limited period of time not to exceed 30 days and identified by specific dates, during which there is a fire hazard or the owner, owner's agent, or person in lawful possession is absent from the premises or property. In addition, a single request for a peace officer's assistance may be made for a period not to exceed six months when the premises or property is closed to the public and posted as being closed. However, this subdivision shall not be applicable to persons engaged in lawful labor union activities which are permitted to be carried out on the property by the Alatory Zenovic Dunlap Berman Agricultural Labor Relations Act of 1975, Part 3.5, commencing with section 1140 of division 2 of the labor code or by the national labor relations act for purposes of this section land real property or structures owned or operated by any housing authority for tenants as defined under section 34213.5 of the health and safety code constitutes property not open to the general public however this subdivision shall not apply to persons on the premises who are engaging in activities protected by the California or United States Constitution, or to persons who... Bam! Are There's my exception right there. <laughs> what was that exception? not apply to persons on the premises who are engaging in activities protected by the United States Constitution. It's right, right there. there. There's carved out my exception right there into that 602 that they charged me with, so that is not going anywhere on me. Don't forget, when you go to court, you should counter-sue them. 
as well. I, right? I, I plan on it. Yeah, I, I, I'll. You know, I, I if 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 Jay Lederman, because I know he's more of a defense attorney, like uh, doesn't want to act in that capacity of being a, a you know of suing. Um, I'll, I'll get the Northern California ACLU uh, to 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 do it because I'm sure they would have no problem with it. But yeah, bam, there's my exception right there. It's carved right out in section. The thing I'm charged with, it's right there in that section. How could they fucking ignore that? What jerks. <laughs> I know. I, I'm, like, up, I'm, like, I'm like, I'm protected under the First Amendment, uh, you know, the United States Constitution. And he says, no, you're trespassing, and that does not apply to you, was basically the, what he was telling me. may not have been verbatim what he said, but that was the gist of what he, what he retorted back to me when I told him I was protected. And he told me, no, that does not cover trespassing. So bam, it's right there in the fucking in the in, in, in their own statute, you know. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> nice. Looks like I might be getting some more equipment. <laughs> Damn right, counter sue them. You know, like okay, I've worked. I, I my parallel used to universe to being a filmmaker and everything. I'm a union activist, and I've been trained really, really fierce. I've worked with the best, as we say in Toronto, best address for the Canadian uh, um, union lawyers on Bay Street, which is the Wall Street of Canada. And, man, I'm my own... Bay Street, Bay Bay Street, Street is, is the lobbying lobby. street in D.C. <laughs> wow. In Toronto, it's where all the banks and uh, uh, the, the stock market uh, is uh, headquarters for all of Canada. But dealing with the best Bay Street lawyers, I'm my own lawyer. Now, I have never in my life been arrested and never been charged, right? And I have said numerous, 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 numerous times that if I ever get arrested in the uh, while I'm live streaming, I don't give two shits. I don't give, and I've said, I've stated this over and over again. I have a very unique case where if I ever get arrested, I will automatically, I don't care what, they charge me with, I would automatically counter sue and it will be a precedent setting case. And I will literally charge them with censorship. But I'm in a unique status being a filmmaker because as a filmmaker using live stream as state of the art filmmaking, I'm actually doing two things there, brother. One, I'm producing said film, and two, Mr. Bug Eyes, I'm exhibiting said film. The fact of that I'm using live stream to exhibit is irrelevant. As, a, as, as an artist, as a filmmaker, I could choose to exhibit any way I want. In the middle of a forest, on a web browser, it's irrelevant. But I am exhibiting at the same time I'm producing, Mr. Big Nose. And uh, so my charge is censorship under film exhibition laws, right? Because in Canada, <laughs> in, in Canada, those laws of film exhibition, um, censorship and film are really entrenched. And there's a lot of great precedent setting. And now the last thing they want to do here in Canada is a precedent setting case involving um, live streamers, let alone civilian journalists. So you, oh, hold on while I get, oh, here we go. He's coming back. There we go. So there the back. last thing they want to do is set a precedent setting case when it involves us civilian journalists. So I would heavily, heavily, as your counter sue, uh, really use uh, censorship as a big thing. Now, I'm a filmmaker, right? If you regard yourself as a filmmaker, you should check out film exhibition laws in the state of California because I know in Canada they're provincial. And the thing is, you're, you're just a filmmaker who's using uh, the web browser to exhibit in. And yeah, as a filmmaker, at, wait, wait. Ultimate as a TV filmmaker, had completely respected that too. Like uh, uh, when when I went in to for the when after the first raid, they were holding a press conference, and to be able to get into the press conference, the guys like, you know, well, is there something you can prove to me that you that you know? Do you have like a, a, a pen and paper or something like something you're gonna be? I'm like, I'm live streaming right now, and he goes, well, what's the address? And he went and he looked to see that I was broadcasting. He's like, that's fine, and they allowed me into the press conference. Uh, you know. Oakland PD has been very accommodating and they know like who I am and everything. And they don't touch me whenever I'm anywhere. San Francisco police, like, or, you know, I think they're under order not to touch me because they know who I am. Um, and apparently LAPD was sort of scared of me because, you know, when they arrested one guy at that chalky pie thing that I went down to cover, um, all of the cops, while the one guy they did arrest was in jail, they, they bought him a steak dinner. They allowed him to use the internet the whole time he was being held. They didn't really keep him in with the general population. They just kind of let him do what he wanted while he was in there. And they kept telling to him, you know, tell, tell, tell your friends not to, to, not to put our names out on the internet. Cause, uh, 
you know, who got families and stuff. So like they knew that if they fucked with me, they'd get doxxed and like, you know, that anonymous would be pretty unhappy with them about it. So Hey yeah. street pizza. Nice. Okay, so while you're eating and I'm eating pizza as well. It's a coast coast to coast pizza making uh, and stuff. Now I wanna stress why fifty nine percent. Yes. So why are you eating? Okay. So, like I said, I have a spotless record, and I worked hard at it because I am my own lawyer. And, yes, we here in North America, yeah. your image is breaking up, by the way. Um, it's uh, it's down. Yeah. Uh, but we can hear you fine. But, so, I'm my own lawyer, and uh, and I know that, that uniform cops are scared shitless when you start talking legalese at them. And, and I know we have to repeat to them, and, yes... I must say, uh, compared to other world uh, countries, that here in North America, we more or less have it easier. You know, when you look at Syria, they shoot live streamers. In Egypt, they shoot live streamers, you know. In Turkey, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they get brutal on them. So, but here in North America, you know, we live streamers, peop anyone has the right to film police in their line of duty. Period. Right? It's like that in Canada. It's like that in the U.S. And and that and and that's just for any normal person. You know, Punk Boy and I. You know, we're live streamers. We're civilian journalists. You know, you know. Uh, I I you know I'm a filmmaker. And the, traditionally, us documentary filmmakers are placed higher up the ladder as than journalists, just because we traditionally have more time to document something. Right? In that classic documentary tradition. So in that. Thing I like you said, your reputation precedes you. You know, in L.A. and Oakland and uh, and thing in Toronto is the same thing. The cops are scared shitless of me because I know my rights and and there's no, they they've attacked me. They've tried to smash my gear. They've jammed me, and you know it's irrelevant to me because I've always stated it numerous times. If they ever arrest me while I'm live streaming, I will counter sue them with censorship. And I quote you know, uh, different uh, cases, and I would literally charge them with censorship in film exhibition, right? And and what they're scared of, what they're really, really scared of is a precedent-setting case. So the fact that, you know, we live streamers and, and civilian journalists, you know, we're being attacked, we're being censored, we're being arrested, there still is not a precedent-setting case. So you, if you can win a countersuit using censorship, that is a huge precedent-setting case, and 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 I talk about it a lot. I talk about it a lot, and, and I hear an echo there. I hear myself there on your end and stuff. Yeah, I'm talking to Saturday. Yeah, so I would heavily recommend in your counter suit uh, uh, censorship, and and if you consider yourself a filmmaker, there, brother. Censorship and film exhibition, and you will find yeah, there's I great. I had the HD camera going, so one was for filmmaking and one was for broadcasting. Yeah, and see, the point there is I know here in Canada and I know in the States there's a lot of precedent setting cases in terms of censorship in film exhibition. And again, I repeat the fact that you consider yourself a filmmaker. I'm a filmmaker, but I use live stream as state of the art filmmaking. So, legally speaking, I am doing two things. The fact that I'm deciding to exhibit on a web browser versus the middle of a forest or a cinema, you know, on the street, that's irrelevant. That's my right as an artist. I choose to exhibit. So, but what I'm technically doing is two things. I'm producing said film, and at the same time, I'm exhibiting it. But the part that I would use in court is censorship in film exhibition, and I'm sure in L.A., you know, Hollywood, I mean, sorry, in uh, California, you know, with Hollywood there, I'm sure there's tons of precedent-setting state cases. I, I'm, I'm guessing that it's a state thing there because here it's a provincial thing in Canada. So I'm sure you could easily research censorship and film exhibition. They won't see this one coming. And once they see that, the last thing they want to do is a precedent-setting case. So if you're smart about it, that's why they, they dare not arrest me. Because I've outlined my case. So if they want to take me on, go right ahead. You might as well shoot me because I'm going to fucking slaughter you in court. 
State by State Guide to Photography at Polling Places, Photographer's Rights PDF Flyer for your photo bag. This is photography, but it should be under the same laws, I would think. Oh, film exhibition. State. Film exhibition. Well, that's that's what uh, what the search I did, and it's only coming up like film festivals and stuff. Um, this goes state by state. Let me find California. Oh, Connecticut. Oh, too far. California. Still, photograph, still photograph and permits in the U.S. California. Rather comprehensive resource outlining regarding need for permits in California and elsewhere. No, that's for photography, though. Um, it was down with photographer's rights in PDF format. Well, let's just look at it. The Know Your Rights pamphlet for based on the bust card and the Know Your Rights pamphlet that's used and available at the ACLU website. Uh, I should also check out ACLU. They might have it. Save. Downloads. Is this for you? Yeah, but just the fact that right there in the in the in the in the California code that they're charging me with, it's completely like carved out right there, like constitutionally protected activity. It's not covered in this. There's the United States. Yeah, this is for photographers though, not for journalists. Because press is the only industry specifically talked about in the Constitution. In the States? Yeah. It's the only industry that has specific protections carved out in the Constitution. And, well, it's strange that the United... This is even stranger that in the States is the only country in the world that doesn't have a state censorship board. It's the producers themselves that have their own rating system. So... That is strange. I, I find that really, really strange that there's no uh, precedent-setting cases in film exhibition. Really? That's strange. Every other country has precedent-setting cases in that. Who is this? Uh, Spirit from New York says, what about paparazzi rights? So much. <laughs> Sorry? That shows up in, in my search for film exhibition, there's uh, news. Why does, why does movie popcorn cost so much? Geographies of Detention Exhibition opens. Uh, the Art of Mike Dream Francisco closing events. Something something. Miller versus California Legal Information Institute. AVS. What's AVS? I don't know. It's and it's talking about plasma applications. Photovolt photovoltaics. Okay, no. Miller versus California child pornography laws. Couple strikes gold after finding nineteen million dollars of of gold coin bonanza exhibitions exhibitions no maybe it's not called the same thing here California Historical Society exhibition against moral rights California Law Review film festival film festival film festival film festival film exhibition. Uh, no, but they're actually just like festival websites. Is it legal to film police in California? Yes. So call a blog. Can I legally film the police in California? Yes, 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 yes. It is not illegal to record a police officer ever. Seven rules for recording police from reason.com. Uh... California man jailed for four days for recording cops, November 25th, 2012. It is totally legal to film on-duty police officers in any capacity under federal law. Six completely legal ways the cops can screw you. Oh, look, let's look at that. <laughs> From crack.com, which is like Mad Magazine, but like they actually do, they actually do real stories. But they do it in like comic form half the time. Arrest you for filming them. No, they cannot. What's the exception to that? Number three, arrest you for filming them. If you search asshole cop on YouTube, you will instantly get hundreds, if not thousands of videos of some police officer tasing or otherwise abusing some kid or grandmother who may not deserve it. Police, police abuse videos are surely the fastest growing segment of online entertainment. Sadly, the entire genre might be on its way out. Currently, three states have made it illegal to film off-duty police officers, and even especially if they are beating up handicapped minorities 
or in the middle of town square. Yes, but those are being one by one knocked down like Chicago's. Chicago, they were using it as an eavesdropping law to try to say that you couldn't film cops because you were you were eavesdropping on them and we're trying to use that oh here they go in illinois massachusetts and maryland they require both parties to consent to any recording for it to be legal which is bullshit and the, uh, the federal courts have uh, have toppled that mm-hmm. although it seems it seems to keep coming up and then they keep knocking it down but but federally like that does not stand uh no supreme court reigned in on uh uh shit uh there goes there goes my concussion brain. Uh, Supreme Court, it's gone. Present what I just said to you to your uh, lawyer when you talk to them and see what uh, they would say. Because if there isn't, then I I say this is because really, one one way to get off is you present this case to them that this is what your case is going to be. They will shy because the way internet censorship is becoming rampant nowadays, the last thing they want is a civilian journalist or live streamer to have a precedent setting case. And and to me, the best way to fight it is censorship and film exhibition. I know in Canada it's an airtight case and I will slaughter them. And that's why they're scared of me because I've told them a million times what my case is. So I'll present that. I'm sure they'll come up with something because it's a very unique... I've always been creative with the law and, uh, and, and when you have the best Bay Street union lawyers in Canada, you know, uh, we've set uh, so many precedent-setting cases because I'm always creative, even with labor law uh, and labor arbitration cases, which is very similar to the regular court system. That's why I've never been arrested, never been charged. I've gotten myself out of tight spots because I start talking uh, legalese to, you know, uniform cops, and they hate when you start talking legalese because that means they're going to have lots of paperwork, and they, they're lugheads. They hate paperwork. In Washington D.C., women carrying more than two condoms on the on their person can be considered prostitutes and arrested. What the fuck? Might as well be another country. Let's see. Number one, steal your identity. For the last couple of years, identify, identity theft has been exalting has been exalted grand poobah of the American Paranoia Club, for, and for good reason. The thought is that someone out there might go into a long, prosperous career in bestiality porn using your name and, and credit uh, to fund to constantly keeps people up at night. But what would be even scarier is if the police is, is if it was the police who took your identity and then created an entire new chapter in your life where they made you a stripper from Ohio or something, which which is something the law actually permits them to do. This used to be illegal no more eight years ago, but it was changed when Ohio passed a law aimed at combating, ironically, identity theft. In 2002, the 2002 law allows law enforcement agencies to take anyone's personal information, driver's license, social security number, etc., and give it to an agent to use while undercover. What the frack is that? That, that is ridiculous. Yep. That in itself wouldn't be so bad if the cops were using your identity to pose as someone cool, like maybe a mafia hitman or Tyrannosaurus Rex. Sadly, in reality, they most often use it. You left him in the hallway. Oh, my God. You left the dog in the hallway. (laughs) As far as we know, Haley Dawson has never taken her clothes off professionally, but for one month in 2003, a woman with the same name, address, and social security number apparently danced naked in front of a bunch of drunkards and internet perverts at a strip joint in Troy, Ohio. That woman was actually Michelle Suze, a criminal justice student participating in an undercover police operation using Dawson's identity as her cover. <laughs> that is... No. <laughs> I cannot believe that. That is... Oh my god, the ten creepiest mug shots. This guy's like missing half of his head. Yikes. <clears throat> it's crazy. And you're eating. So let's see. Uh, so the other completely legal ways the cops can screw you. Let's see. They can steal your stuff. Uh, let's see. According to... What was it? According to... I just read that. Steal your stuff. Imagine you had your car stolen and then fortune smiles upon you and the cops find it. Find the thief after they used it to smuggle 200 pounds of cocaine across the border, running over 30 children in the process while sexually assaulting the car itself. You realize you're going to need to get to get all of its fluids replaced 
from a mechanic with the soft voice and general hands, but you want it back because it's your car, right? Then some bad news. It's been sold to, to buy a new espresso machine for the station's break room. It's called civil asset forfeiture. You probably have already heard of something like this where the police get to seize your car and house during a drug uh, and house of some drug kingpin and stick the money in the department's budget. That's criminal forfeiture. But then there's a loophole where the police can seize anything they suspect has been used in any crime, even if it doesn't belong to the criminal, and even if there hasn't been a conviction. Then then if you, as the actual owner of the goods, try to challenge it, the burden of proof is on you to prove that you didn't know that it was being used in said, said crime. That's civil forfeiture. Okie dokie. Uh, guess your car speed and ticket you for it. So when the cop pulls you over and says, sir, do you know how fast you were going? If you're going like 40 or 42 and you go, sir, if you, wait, oh, couldn't have been more than 40 or 42. Cop says, sir, it was over 100. I have it on my radar. You go, I see. Sir, where are your pants? That's actually a very funny, very funny story, officer, something, something. Luckily, those days are in the past, not the part about spending the night in jail for driving bottomless around a school zone. The radar thing. Police don't need it anymore. Don't need them anymore because now they can just guess your speed and ticket you based on their own guesses. This is another Ohio law. In June 2010, when the Ohio Supreme Court decided in a 5-1 to one ruling that a trained officer does not need any of those technology gadgets or gizmos to determine if your car is speeding in accordance with their ruling, the visual estimate of an experienced officer is enough to convict anyone of speeding without the need for wastes of time like independent verification or evidence. Really, I'm not going to Ohio anytime soon. Arrest you for drinking in a bar. What? Okay. Now that's insane. <laughs> that's the scenario in states with a very broad public intoxication law like Texas. In 2006, Texas scored the highest number of drunk driving fatalities in the country. And after determining that this was a rare problem that could not be blamed on immigrants or homosexuals, state decided to do something about it. Namely, they dusted off an old 1993 law... <coughs> And gang interpreted it atop a pinball machine until somehow it became legal to arrest people for so much as being near a bottle of booze anywhere, including in a bar. We're not exaggerating for the sake of comedy here. Not only have they decided a bar as part of the public that public intoxication forbids, but they don't even require a breathalyzer test in order to determine if you're actually drunk. They can make arrests based nothing on more than their own hunches. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Fact is always stranger than fiction. Five baffling facts about Twitter porn accounts. So I hope the cops aren't watching tonight and are completely prepared. Well, they don't have any rebuttal because they completely broke their own law. Yep. So I'm going to pull out. What was that guy, the sheriff from Steubenville? I know exactly who Anonymous is, and I'm coming after you, Anonymous. So I know exactly who those officers are, and I'm coming after them. Insane. That, that was the most hilarious fucking video I've ever seen. One of them was that sheriff, like, I know exactly who Anonymous is. It's not the Anonymous who's hacked into the government, the, the, the one that everybody knows and loves, basically, you said. But this is a fake Anonymous. Oh, and I totally gave my business card to the to the cops who were there earlier in the day, so they knew exactly who they were going to be messing with. Because uh, the bio on the back of my business card, I'll show you. Um, so from Clout, which is that social media ranking website, um, if you get up to a certain point, like they give you like little free perks from companies. They're basically just a way to give advertising to other companies. So this company called Moo that makes business cards like gave me fifty free cards as long as I paid the five bucks for shipping, and they're really nice. They're made on sustainable. Uh, sustainable card stock they're high gloss um they're made really well and so on the back under my little uh you know uh, on my my bio on the back i wrote unofficial non-member of anonymous part of the urine on live news team part of global red live global rev live media sponsored by ustream independent not-for-profit so it lets them know exactly who they're fucking with on that on my card nice. and, uh, if that's the way they want to play it like i'll play their little game right back at them and uh, the symbol that I'm using there, that was actually a picture taken in Yemen. Uh, I think it may have been... A little lower, a little lower. It, oh, that's right. I'm on another camera. So it may have actually been um, Stanley himself who took this picture or somebody sent it to him, one or the other. Um, but this is street art from Yemen. It is a uh, yin-yang. And on the top there is, uh, 
is a drone, which is what we send down on the people on Yemen all the time. And their response on the bottom is a, is a dove of peace. So like we treat them uh, horribly with drones and they respond back with uh, symbols of peace. Nice. And I've been using that as my show logo. Although um, Pete the Killer on Twitter, who did my old uh, uh, Twitter logo that I used to use, which is a little Playboy bunny with the driver's cap and a cigarette hanging out of his mouth, um, I asked him if he could do me another logo, and I will let me see if I can find it and send it to you guys. Can I just send a picture on Skype? Uh, I can send a file. I can send a file. Uh, yes, you can. File yes. You can show it up. Um, let me find it. Pictures. Yes, Skype is still free. There we go. So you should have a, a file coming through. So that's the logo that he came up with for my show, the one I've been using. Oh, other popular videos on the cracked site. Why space aliens might just be humans from the future. And isn't that what the uh, Zeitgeist guy, uh, or was it the Zeitgeist movie? I think it was this. Nope. Hello? Okay. It's a crow, and so the crow, the reason he chose that was that in many cultures, the crows are the animal that's able to wake the dead, and since the show is Wake the Fuck Up, um, that's why he chose that. Uh, well, yeah, it's probably, in indigenous cultures, it's probably a raven that's able to do that. But they're also usually harbingers of, of bad things to come and stuff, too. Well, at least the ravens are. So I think the crows can wake the dead and the ravens are harbingers, But which is, I think, why uh, Poe chose to do his story about the raven. Well, the raven in, in a lot of First Nations uh, uh, territories in Turtle Island, they use the raven in the creation stories, how Turtle Island was created. Uh yeah, they're very uh, mythical birds uh, and very spiritual birds. Well, certainly oh, the most intelligent. Yeah, and certainly the most spiritual of all birds is the eagles to all First Nations, especially here to the Mi'kmaq um, here in New Brunswick on the Maritime Provinces. Where's the chat? I'm going to bring up the chat back again. There we go. Take yeah, some questions yeah. from the live chat. Anybody have any questions for Punk Boy? Uh, type them out on the, if you're watching at Global Rev, thank you, Rise, for mirroring us. But uh, Punk Boy is taking questions from the Occupied Toronto live chat. Uh, type away, folks. Go ahead there, Punk Boy. Rise, Rise thought that was funny where the sheriff said, fake anonymous. During a mistaken drug bus at Georgia SWAT team threw a flashbang grenade into a baby's crib. Yeah, I remember all about that. It was a couple weeks ago. Um, saw that another baby was killed by a flashbang grenade when her blanket was set on fire by one, said Spirit. Um, Brookside said they got to stop this insanity. Where are all the Serpicos? Oh, why is that word escaping me? I know the word. Um, Remember the film uh, Al Pacino in the 70s? The, uh, he was in a corrupt precinct, and he was the guy that snitched on them, and they went after him? Sort of like... Yeah, uh, the Serpicos are the... Uh, was it was it like a vigilante cop gang or something, right? Oh, Serpico was a good cop that snitched on all the bad cops in the precinct. Serpico yeah, but was played by Al Pacino. The bad gang of, of cops that he was that he was infiltrating or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Strawberry? I tried it. Oh, share a Coke with your soulmate. Let's see, then Spirit, New Mexico cops are being investigated by the feds for killing of 26 people. Yes, Spirit, uh, if you go and uh, go to, to, I'll put a link in the chat. Um, we did a whole show on my uh, on my podcast uh, arranged by, if he's in here, uh, C. Grapsky, Charlie Grapsky. Uh, he's been very gracious in helping me organize a couple of, of my last shows, uh, probably the one this week, unless I cover the Google thing this week and put it up to next week, which I may do. I'm still uncertain. I need to, I need to look over all the stuff that he's been sending to me. Anyway, but uh, so the guy also said relax when a woman said she was raped. The guy says relax, says Patty. Uh, yeah, so let me put a link to my podcast site of, uh, let's see, blog, 
talkradio.com slash wake da da fuck f u q u p. So this link will take you to that. And actually, if I grab this, I'll send you a direct link to the to the one we did a whole episode on on Albuquerque. And I think that the opening mix to that I, came out very well. I sort of put together these audio mixes uh, to start each show with, and. Uh, there it is, James Boyd, Op Albuquerque, and the DOJ from Spark to Inferno. Um, and so I, I think the audio mix I did for the beginning of that one came out really well. It, it ended up being a little lengthier as I went back and listened to it. It was a little longer than I probably... Oh, shut her up. Uh, it was a little longer than I thought it should have been when I went back and listened to it again. I think I probably shouldn't have let the guy... The guy talk like this. I forget his name. He's a, sort of a... The thinker, philosopher kind of guy. I don't remember his exact name, uh, but he he does a lot of discussions on violence, and I think I let his part go on a little too long, especially since he's got such a speech impediment that it becomes sort of annoying to listen to after a bit. Patty was saying that when she was arrested back in January to Fullerton 15, uh, the cop kept saying, just like the, the cop said to you, relax over and over and over again. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, okay, so Charlie's reiterating what I was saying, that uh, millions of debt to do civil suits. Uh, yeah, uh, so DOJ has, did finish their, their first major investigation. They printed uh, the report out, and I think I may have a link to it on the, on the site for, for the episode seven of my show. Uh, if it's not there, like some one of the links that's up there will definitely link to the actual DOJ report. Uh, but yeah, they they released their first report that basically says that in at least half of, and the you know the other ones are sort of unclear from the information that they have, but are probably unjustified. But it, definitely at least half of those cases were definitely unjustified by the police, even though ruled justified. And a uh, quick uh, point of fact, like there was never, according to the police and the person who oversees all of their shootings and determines whether they're justified or not, um, what do you call it? They, they had never determined one of their own shootings to be unjustified by the person who reviews them until after that DOJ report came and they had another shooting and then one of them was ruled unjustified by their person. You know, it took the DOJ coming down on them. But the DOJ has not given them anything with any teeth yet as far as i know uh they've insisted there that they keep an oversight board which has no teeth and has never found anyone until the doj report doing any wrong by an officer which what i just said and also that um that i heard that the the civilian police review, review board or however they call it the oversight board there uh that they were sick of not having any teeth in it and correct me if i'm wrong charlie but they they most of them resigned because they were like, we've been telling them this for months and then there's nothing that they can actually do about any of the stuff. And they never listened to their suggestions, which is the problem I found when I went to the Citizens Police Review Board in Berkeley and in Oakland to report all the shit that was happening to us because of Occupy things. And, you know, they several resigned, Charlie says. So not not the entire board, but many of them were just like, look, we've been doing this. We've been telling you that they're fucked up and nobody does anything about it. So what good are we and left? basically um but yeah that was my experience like we all went to the police review review boards in berkeley it was a little more red tapey but in oakland they were just like i mean because you saw the way that, that we were treated in oakland they were just they were all basically like we're all on your side and and nothing comes of what we tell them because all we are is a, is a board of suggestions and uh, they have no actual teeth themselves and so I stopped going to those police review boards because, you know, uh, what? So I'm just going to get my complaint put on record and then nothing ever becomes of it. So it seemed like a big waste of time to me. And I went to like two or three of them. I went to one in Oakland because Spencer had put together a really amazing uh, PowerPoint kind of thing or whatever the Apple equivalent of that is. And uh, we gave it to them. They all agreed with us and said something should be done and told the cops that something needed to be done and the cops say, okay, we'll take it under advisement and they, they go and shit on it somewhere. So, right. Like we take orders from Occupy. Or from the citizens, they don't either. All right. Uh, let's see. No, I have no cash until later tonight. 
All right. Uh, anyway, what time is it? 9.30. All right, we'll go another, like, 15 minutes, and then I've got a couple of people I need to get in touch with who I was supposed to hang out with on Tuesday and uh, ended up in jail. Police unions negate most efforts to create real oversight, claiming they have their claiming that they have rights that require in, only poli- internal police review. Yeah, well, we see how, the, uh, at least here, uh, internal affairs seem to be the people who were telling them. How is Spencer these days, Brookside says. I've not seen him in quite a while. Um, he did come to, not the birthday, but something last year. I think we had, um, did he come to the thing in December? Uh, within the last year, I've seen him. And, uh, let him know about tomorrow so you can tell the vet. Um, what do you think, Charlie? I, I'm not sure if I still have my wits about me enough to know enough, unless you want to take the lead and, like, you know, I'll sort of facilitate the episode and I'll try to put together. It probably won't be a very long one, but an audio thing. And uh, and if you want, you can um, dictate to me over the chat, like, the numbers of the people that you know are the ones calling in. And then I'll sort of facilitate more of the show and sort of leave it more into your hands to host. Um, or if you, uh, I, I don't know how pressing the, the issue is on whether or not you want it to get out in time. Because um, I don't really have anything set up otherwise tomorrow. So I think that might be, we might just still do it and do a go for tomorrow. And I'll let you host a little more than me. And then, um, and just sort of, I'll, I'll be your tech basically for the episode and we'll let you be the host basically since you're familiar with all of them, you know more of their stories and, uh, yeah, I think that's the way I want, that, that I'm okay with doing it for tomorrow because, uh, I'm not going to have enough time to, to brush up on all of it, but I'll certainly chime in and, and speak my piece if there's, oh shit, ice fell out and I just splashed everywhere. Um, that I have no problem voicing an opinion when it comes down to anything that I do feel I have, uh, knowledge enough to comment on but other than that like i don't know that i have enough stats and uh and figures in my head to to be much of any help otherwise but i certainly have already started downloading some audio clips um to 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 mash up for the opening and (laughs) apparently everybody knew about me that there were lyrics to the uh, theme song from mash and that the title is actually called suicide is painless and it's a rather sort of grim song um, and I guess it was used with the lyrics in the movie and not the TV show, but I just thought, oh, I'll play that MASH song at the beginning, and then I went to go look it up on YouTube, and I was like, oh, what a horrible, horrible song. They're <laughs> contemplating suicide sort of through the whole thing, and I mean, there's probably a deeper meaning to the lyrics that I don't get, but at least from the surface, it seems like they're sort of, you know, distraught through the entire thing and suicide is one of their options the match scene with great suicide is painless yes in the movie the doctor's son wrote and played it oh the director's son wrote and played it okay yeah it, it's very 70s it's very like all oh, the leaves are brown kind of sounding the dentist in the movie wanted to commit suicide so it is directly about contemplation of suicide which i thought was very oddly apropos considering it's you know considering all the veteran suicide that's been happening and stuff like i thought it was sad and apropos at the same time but so I guess I do need to see the uh, the original movie because I didn't really watch this, the TV show ever I just I always knew the theme song and didn't realize there were lyrics to it and where did my lighter go <coughs> as you see this cold I've had for a week and a half is on its way out but still not completely gone and did you take the lighter honey the torch lighter Where? Oh, yes. See, I'm still blind, too. And this was not considered a weapon to them, amazingly. Thanks. It's not, but I thought they were going to, like... Thanks for the cold, by the way. Oh, uh, well, you got it? Well, you're the one that insisted I sleep with you when I told you I'd sleep on the little bed on the side. No, no. It's since you said. Uh, I need tissue. Oh, no, we're not. I bought... I bought a pack at the Berkeley Bowl. I bought, uh, you know, a pack of travel ones. So here, you you have those? Yeah, so do I. I was going to buy seventh generation, but I'm like, those things will never fit in my backpack with all my equipment. So I just bought a pack of all these little portable, individually wrapped things that would pack around my equipment. You know, seventh generation, it's the natural recycled brand 
because seven generations is how uh, native cultures look at uh, their impact upon the planet is you look seven generations ahead and make sure that you don't impact stuff for something to that effect. That's exactly right. They're always thinking seven generations ahead. Yes, uh, we're live with Punk Boy and San Francisco. Yar. So when's the court date? Or is there any uh, talk of a court date? Your audio's off. There, is that better? Okay. So uh, ironically, the, the quote unquote hippies that were occupying Google headquarters were given a court date of August 8th. And does anybody know why August 8th is a weirdly significant day for most hippies and not for me because I didn't really listen to them? Does anybody know what happened August 8th? Is that the Democratic Convention in Chicago, those arrests? Nope. That would be the day that uh, Jerry Garcia died. <laughs> Oh, yes, in 95, 96. Uh, I think 96-ish, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the dog tried to bite my husband because he was near his bone. So he's now in the bathroom on a timeout. Uh, geez, if I could type here, August 8th. Here we go. Lyrics. I'm going to post up some lyrics in the chat in a second as they come up. So there is a punk band that I really like called No Effects, and they did a song about August 8th and sort of the, uh, the hypocrisy of some of the hippies. And here we go. Copy, and let me paste it in the chat here. Where's the chat? There it is. If it'll let me post up this many words, I think. Well, it's going to let me post up two lines of it. From Revedrin suddenly. There you go. It goes there. And then we'll do the next two lines since it's all it's giving me at a time. Oh, it didn't get the last part. Hold on. Suddenly everything is okay. Copy. Paste. There we go. And then next two next two lines. So it was 10 of you that were arrested, right? Penny what? It was 10 of you that were arrested? Yes, 10. So uh, there would have been 11, but one of uh, the occupiers is going through cancer treatment with experimental drugs that they would not have been able to facilitate giving him in jail. And he explained that to them, told them he had all the paperwork and that they would be threatening his life, basically, if they were to throw him in jail for something as silly as they were doing. Uh, and so they did not take him away. So uh, when Patty was arrested in January, they're known as the Fullerton 15. I guess you guys are known as the Google 10 and a nice uh, digital number, 1-0. You could say G10, and then we could also be the superpowers of the world. Whoa. Okay, so now let's talk about the National Day of Action against Google uh, and boycott Google, and uh, then we'll call it a night. Well, yeah, I don't think I'll be able to boycott Google considering my phone is Android and I, I'm still an Android fanboy as much as much as of our personal information as it leaks in, by, because people don't know how to develop properly and so their apps like are throwing our personal information out left and right. Speaking of, and I'll find the article too, There's uh, there was a great um, article on uh, Morning Edition, which is an NPR news show here, uh, our public radio. Let me find out. It was NPR... Uh, Personal info, mobile leak. I'm trying to figure out if that's the right, right keywords. Uh, ours test internet surveillance by spying on an uh, NPR report. Where's the thing? NSA leaks first listen. Is this it? Um, yeah. 
this was just maybe two weeks ago or a week ago, a week or two, they had this great article that was like, they got a security firm to go and just monitor what our cell phones are transmitting, even when we're not using them, when they're just sitting there, like what kinds of personal information go in and out of our cell phones. And it was like, it was, it was, it was very revealing. It was like, they're putting out your number, your address, like all the stuff that you've agreed to, uh, in those little, like, when you install an app and it says this app has access to your blah 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 and you tell it yes half the time it's broadcasting it out there unencrypted like you know for anybody out there just listening to your cell phone data going back and forth to get like without any any effort on their part like it's just throwing it out there automat like on its own <coughs> edward snowden has a job at a russian website lawyer says yeah i still don't trust edward snowden at all I don't trust any of those leaks. I don't trust any of, the, any of that other stuff. Privacy policy. Urgh. What the hell was that article called? I'll find it and I'll put it up in a little bit. Uh, okay, so the, the you said it was a July 10th uh, date we were calling for. It's probably on that paper I have here. Uh, Sofa Pippin 2012. You're also preparing for a major day of online protest. So that must be July 10th, you're saying. Um, yeah, so what they're asking for uh, and what they never got a chance to talk with the Google representatives with uh, is that they would like the same type of protest that went on against SOPA and PIPA for a lot of these online giants to participate in a blackout day, like an internet blackout day. And I remember what was hugely uh, impractical about them choosing the day that they did uh, back that January 2012 was that it was the day during Occupy Congress when a lot of us could not just refrain from using the internet because we were organizing all of the Occupy Congress stuff. And we had to be on Twitter to let people know what was going on. And it was during the day of Occupy Congress that, you know, it was completely impossible for us to do. So what a lot of us who were there in DC for that protest did was we, we blacked out our, uh, our Twitter, our Twitter icons, you know, our Twitter, uh, avatar pictures. Um, so that was what we did for that because we couldn't completely refrain from using the internet, but that was what a lot of people that's what people were asked to do was to not use the internet to black out your site. Um, there was just a couple months back, there was the day we fight back against internet surveillance um, in honor of Aaron Schwartz also, because it was him who called for that uh, SOPA uh, blackout day. Um, and that day I went with Code Pink to Diane Feinstein's house um, to, you know, in front of her front door. And we had our protest at her house because she's the head of the Senate Intelligence Committee one of the two heads. There's a, the conservative head and the liberal head, or is it the House and Senate? I guess um, have each have a, a head of this of the Intelligence Committee. Um, but she's the lady who was just like completely fine with all of the NSA snooping. If it's even true, like I have doubts about how much of the the leaked the leaked stuff is is actually true or not. Um, but she was all okay with it until supposedly like they were monitoring the Senate people too. And then she was like, oh, well, you can't do that. You know, we're exempt from that kind of bullshit, you know, which complete hip completely hypocritical. Um, but so, so Code Pink decided to protest in front of her house, which we did. Because ironically, in front of her house is a public park, like <laughs> where she lives. Literally, her front yard is a public park. Um, so we're perfectly within our rights to be on her front lawn for, for, for all intents and purposes protesting because it's a public park. So Patty asked, what day is that boog, uh, boog, 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 Google boycott? I think, it's, I think it's July 10th. And let me pull up an article just to verify that really quick. Samsung cam. Here we go. Uh, live stream occupy Toronto. Uh, big Guardian article maybe. Let me see where it was at. This is Fake Guardian, Occupy Google. I should just Occupy Google and then Occupy.com. Why'd you do it? We ask fake Google employee, somebody, somebody. Um, net neutrality of kids arrested at Google headquarters. Here we go. Yes, the Big Guardian did a pretty good article. Uh, they got everything right except for the fact that I was not wrestled to the ground. Okay, so here's the stats I was trying to remember. Though Google's mantra, don't be evil, seems like a no-brainer, the protesters allege Google has only taken token gestures to address net neutrality. 
A damning report by the Chronicle showed Google spent only about 280000 in political contributions to sway regulators to maintain net neutrality, with their net neutrality advocates spending uh, uh, adding up to adding up to, uh, to $600,000. So a total between all the companies that say that they're for net neutrality spent about $600,000. It's like pennies to them. Conversely, the telecom industry, including AT&T, Comcast, and others, have spent at least $2 million to sway lawmakers the other way. So considering there's way more uh, tech companies than there are of the, what is there, five major telecoms in the country, it's like you know, the closest thing to a monopoly that they can get. And, and basically, as far as cable companies, is a monopoly because they both have agreements to stay out of each other's territories, which means in any given jurisdiction here in, in the United States, you have one cable operator to choose from for your internet. And then maybe a few scattered DSL providers. And then, uh, like we have MVNO's uh, uh, something virtual network operator, which basically is like you go to Virgin Mobile and Virgin Mobile uses Sprint as their backbone for their for their company. So there's like the equivalent of MVNOs for cell phones uh, because DSL runs over the phone line, which is considered a common carrier law, covers it, um, which is different from the cable companies. Cable companies don't have to open up their the things that they lay, they don't have to open up for other companies to use uh, their infrastructure. But telephone, which is considered a utility, does. Therefore, there are more DSL companies that can buy and rebrand the DSL bandwidth from people like AT&T and other phone companies that run DSL. They're forced under law to, to, to allow other companies to buy space on their network, basically, to rebrand and resell their, their infrastructure. Uh, cable companies don't have that, so... There's Comcast, Time Warner Cable, and Cox, I think, are the three cable companies. And none of them step on each other's toes as far as territory. Um, all right. Is it Thursday, uh, July 10th? Is the National Day of Action to boycott Google? Uh, it's not necessarily to boycott Google, but I think it's, it's the day that, that they're asking for there to be sort of a blackout-style protest of net neutrality. And they were asking Google to join in it. Uh, they may, since our arrest, have have you know changed their mind and, and have integrated a, a Google boycott into that day. That I, I I haven't really talked to any of them since we were all let go and had breakfast yesterday. Um, so they may be asking for that specifically too. But uh, as of the day that we were there at Google, like what July tenth was was. Um, here we go. Uh, the protests are calling for a National Day of Action on July 15th. So it's 15th and not the 10th. Unless the 10th is a separate thing they're asking for boycott Google, which I have not heard. Um, but uh, all the information I had up until yesterday was that July 15th, which is the end of the FCC's public comment period for net neutrality. So if you have not done so yet and you're an American citizen, uh, go to the FCC website, look for the public comment page. Um, they're asking for public comment on what the citizenry uh, has to chip in on net neutrality so go and spew your mind there just like john oliver who does the show on hbo said like internet trolls this is your moment like go and uh and the day after he asked for that on his show on hbo uh he's the guy that used to do the daily show with john stewart who was anchoring for him while he was gone last summer um he has his own show and basically the fcc website was inadvertently ddosed by too many people going on john oliver's request to go and comment on on the uh, net neutrality issue on their site. Um, but an internet blackout campaign modeled after the anti-SOPA PIPA online protests that managed to preserve internet freedom in the past, specifically Occupy Google wrote, they urge websites to do the following, blackout their entire website for the day, replacing it with information linking to petitions and to the FCC comment page, since it will be the last day to do so. Um, add a button to their website connecting users to information and petitions online, which I think is sort of what that one said, minus the FCC comment thing. Um, create their own creative way to connect their users to this issue and how to fight back and protect net neutrality. We are committing to we are committed to occupying Google headquarters until the company gets involved in honest dialogue on net neutrality and until real action is taken to maintain the free and open internet. To his credit, Mayor Ed Lee, who is a complete douchebag here in San Francisco, recently championed net neutrality at the recent Conference of Mayors this Monday. His resolution to urge the SEC to enshrine net neutrality as a right was signed by the New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, who is another turncoat who everybody elected to be the Occupy Mayor of New York because he was spewing, you know, 99% rhetoric all through his campaign. One of his first actions was to bring back, uh, I forget the douchebag's name, but the guy who wrote the 
uh, stop and frisk laws, the one who they wanted to bring here to Oakland that we protested and, and I apparently kept out of Oakland. Um, you know, they, they brought that guy back on as the fucking uh, chief of police in New York. You know, douche, douche, douchey, douche, douchebag. He, he, when Occupy was going on and he was not the chief of police in New York, said, if that had happened under my watch, I would have crushed Occupy Wall Street like a bunch of cockroaches. That's the guy that the Occupy mayor brought on to be the police chief in New York. So fuck them. And I warn people, I'm like, if he's campaigning as an Occupy mayor, you can bet that he's going to do the exact opposite once he gets in there. And uh, as usual, I'm right. <laughs> Net neutrality, oh, this must be from our mayor. Net neutrality is critical for an innovation economy to thrive because if the broadband companies could choose what web pages you can access, the internet would lose its power. It's the most powerful communication tool we've ever known, said Mayor Lee in a press statement. I'm grateful to my co-sponsors and the U.S. Conference of Mayors for adopting principles of a free and open internet as the official policy of America's mayors. That's not a terrible thing that he's done, but he's done a lot of bad things too. And basically, he's in the pocket of the Chinese Communist Party here, and uh, a lot of his, a lot of their backroom money here comes from the Chinese Communist Party, which I think is also why uh, Oakland is run by a Chinese mayor too. That's probably where a lot of her campaign money came from. It looks like Lee has a lot in common with the Occupy Google protesters. It says, eh, pfft, whatever. Other than the fact that he's the one championing all the the. Google people like taking over all of our stuff. Below, we've embedded the arrest of Punk Boy NSF, says the Big Guardian. I wonder what the, uh, let's see, my viewership now, or the amount of views, it's up to. It's stuck at about 14,300, I guess, because there's not, not as many articles coming out, <coughs> coming out today. But, I mean, that's, that's, oop, stop. That's so, in how, two days. How, that's in two days, 14,000. The Probably the most watched video, uh, other than that one, is going to be OPD Raid 1, because there was nobody else that streamed. Oh, let's see. I've got to put it exactly for it to come up. OPD Raid 1. How did, there it is. Occupy Oakland OPD Raid 1, recorded October 25th. So how can I get that to come out right? Ah. Click there. And at this page, go to dashboard. I want to know how many people actually watch this one. Here we go. Going to come out, videos. No, it's not going to show there. Can't figure out how to get... Shut up. To look, to look at what the views are on that video from Occupy Oakland. My channel total has 886 followers, 423,240 views. I need to have them change my donation link because WePay is no longer doing donations. Uh, huh. Here's somebody the other day signed in on Yahoo. Everyone is arrested for trespassing. What? Video footage is admissible information in court. Anyone, including officials prohibiting its use, are committing the serious offense of interfering with the collection of evidence and perverting the course of justice, said Joe Bloggs. Top commentator, when did he post this? Yesterday at 4.50 a.m. So it could be considered, uh, uh, what do they call that? Um, uh, when you're interfering with the, uh, uh, there's a specific legal term for obstruction it. Obstruction of justice? Obstruction of justice. So they, those cops can be considered uh, interfering with the collection of evidence and perverting the course of justice. So basically obstruction of justice, I can try to get those cops on too, but that's a criminal, that's a criminal charge and not, a, not something I can lobby as a civilian, I don't think. But so I, I would urge the, uh, the county of Santa Clara to come or, or the federal uh, state, whatever, whatever, uh, Whatever body uh, it goes over the cops there should be charging those specific cops who arrested me with, with uh, um, what do you call it, what you just said. Obstruction <laughs> of so justice. Of my brain not functioning since this concussion thing. It's, it's, Obstruction it's, of justice. Obstruction of justice, yeah. So they should be charged with that. Um, <laughs> because I was collecting evidence for them, you know. that's I think that's what I told the cop Um let me see if I can do the, uh, I could probably do, where is it? Uh, uh, let me do the screen share back again. And we'll finish up the little bit of video footage I have as soon as I can pull this up. Alrighty. All right. It's under view. What was it? No, you said it's under Skype, context. Uh, view, screen share. View. 
I don't see it. Or call, we, call, uh, under call. Under call, here, here we go, call, share screens, start. Okay, so now you see it, right? All right, so now we're getting to, I think this is, let me go. So this would be, back, back. Try to get back to, there we go. Okay, so. Oh, hold on, something is. Hold on, where's that coming from? I'll split screen myself here. That is coming from one of these. Close that, close that. One of these is playing video. Let me see if I could find out which one it is to shut it up. Where is that coming from? No. No. Supporting us throughout the night. I hear it, I hear it, I hear it, but I don't see it. Clout, clout. I hear him talking about his... Pause. And where is that sound coming from? Because I need to quiet that one up. Okay, let me try that. Closing that. Unmuting. Is it still going? No, it's not for some reason. Yeah, well, I mean, I stopped it for a second to see if it was... Yeah, so even though I had that paused, for some reason it's... Oh, look, can you see that here? Uh, Whole Foods is being charged with uh, price gouging, so it's like whole paycheck? That must be the RT report. Yep, Whole Foods charged with price gouging. Uh, does anybody have any credible insight about OxyContin effects? Lifespan? Okay, whatever. People in my Facebook. Uh, so apparently today I missed the stop uh, I missed the march to stop the Ellis Act evictions, which was also sort of a thing that Google is not asking them to do, but should be asking them to do because it's their employees flooding our city that's kicking out a lot of the poor people. Uh, okay, people accept my friend request. Okay, now I need to get the photo thing here. Oh, actually, no, I have to go to first go oh, users. Okay, go away live stream chat. Let me go to the last, toward the end, go to the first one in the dark here. Open with photos. There we go. All right, so that's what I thought it should have been. Full screen? Yeah. So this is now that it became dark and a good majority of the population of employees had gone home um, then I guess their higher ups told them, okay, employees are gone. There's not many witnesses, you know, not in so many words, but this is probably their the intent behind what they're saying. Like, you know, there's no witnesses now. So why don't you just ask them to go home? You know, we don't probably something to the effect of, we don't want to have to pay a bunch of security guards to keep to babysit you guys the whole night. Um, so why don't, why don't you just tell them like everybody's gone? Why don't, why don't you tell them to leave and come back tomorrow? They're welcome to come back tomorrow, which is what they kept saying, you know, to their credit, like, you know, we just we just don't think it's it's necessary for them to have to stay overnight. And the other side's opinion is like we're occupiers and we're occupying, which includes you know crashing here overnight. And uh, it came to that point where Google was like, no, we don't need them here overnight. They're not really. There's nobody here to really see their protest, so it serves no purpose for them to stay overnight. We don't we don't want them to stay and. So why don't you just make sure that they leave? If they don't leave, call the cops, I think is basically the orders that they were probably given. And, you know, they, they, they tried appealing to the people like, hey, you guys are welcome to come back tomorrow, uh, you know, but there's no reason for you to be here overnight. They said, well, you've seen our tents. You knew what our, what our intentions were. I mean, that's what the tents meant. And they basically never came to a consensus, but, you know, the, so they never came up to a meeting of the minds. This is just back and forth, back and forth, and then nothing really coming of it, because... And then the occupier is sort of saying, well, like, you know, if you forcibly evict us from here, it's not going to look too good for you guys. <laughs> hint, hint, and, uh, which is what ended up happening. 
No, we haven't gotten much press today, but you know, if all of a sudden you see that that it'll become more newsworthy to the mainstream if you guys decide to kick us out and. So if you get the police to call and detain, if you get the police to call and detain us, you know, it'll look really bad for you because all day you've never said anything about us not staying here. And it was obvious that our intentions were that because we've, we've had tents up all day. And he says something, they, then they replied, they keep saying to the effect of like, you know, we let you guys be here all day. You guys have been really cool. We've had no problem with you. And because you guys were peaceful and everything went, went, went by really nicely, like we didn't make you guys leave earlier, but you know, it's after hours now and they're asking us to tell you to go. It's basically the gist of all these conversations. Then probably the next tier up on their security detail keeps coming, driving by and be like, are they still here? Are they still here? I'm guessing or something. Um, there's the Google bike I keep talking about. So the frame is yellow, then the tires are like green, and then the basket's red. Like the, the five primary colors that make up their logo, like are are the colors of those bikes. I think they're kind of cool. Um, so it's like in the interim, then the security truck comes by again. They're just like, "What do you want to do?" And they're just like, "I don't know what to do. Probably." Uh, and they're just like, well, I guess we're going to have to call the police and tell them to tell them to get them out of here. Is probably what they're coming up to. And then, oh, and then the cops finally show up. And they show up with two black and whites at first. And then within a few minutes of discussion where it is obvious that people don't seem like they're getting, that they're going to talk them out of it very soon. Um, about, I think there was maybe a total of 10 black and whites plus the paddy wagon plus then the sheriff's bus that rolled up to take us all away. But the bus didn't show up until after I think they detained us. Um, so this is different police officers than we're here during the day. Um, and this guy was actually very reasonable. He kept, they're like, well, all we've wanted is Google to come out and talk to us all day and nobody's come out and talked to us. You know, we're sort of, we're, we're trying to support them. We wish they'd support us. And he's like, well, if you want them to support you, don't you think you should just do what they ask and go and come back tomorrow? They're just like, but it's an occupation. And so, you know, it, 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 they say one thing, they say the other, and nobody ever changes their mind on, on the stance that they've taken. Um, so it's still these two officers who are pretty reasonable. I mean, I mean, anytime I'd move over to try to get a different angle, like they'd keep an eye on me like I was going to jump them or something. Like cops are always uber paranoid and... You know, there's a lot of dicks out there, so I guess they've, they've got reason to be paranoid half the time. But the cop, um, this cop here is the one who specifically went to come over and talk to me and try to explain to me that that the First Amendment does not cover me as a trespasser, which I found from reading the law myself, it does. And uh, so I think he was the one whose name ends up being on as the arresting officer, I think it specifically has his name, so I will hold him uh, severally liable um, in, my, in my lawsuit against them. So more back and forth, and then, and then a misunderstanding where they thought that the security people would allow them to stay if they took the tents down and just didn't, didn't sleep in the tents or something, and that was like a weird misunderstanding that wasn't, that they weren't really understanding each other. Um, and so then, then so then they bring the rest of the officers in. This is when the rest of the black and white show up. Then we see, you know, all in force there. Okay, now it's time to go. And then they have sort of a powwow, and they agree. Okay, we'll move our shit over and take it out of. This is the the private private property. Whether or not the other side is public private or something, I think the the statute that they charged me with was closed lands, uh, which makes it sound like it's probably maybe a public park, which a public private park might be considered the same and be under the same laws but when it's closed it's closed lands i think which is what the trespassing charge shows but it does not apply to me um and as much as i don't like waving the first amendment as a get out jail free card a lot of times it is and it should not have uh they should not have been living that 602 section o at me um because the the uh, I wish I'd had a law book to even read it right then, but by the time they wrote that up on the paper and I saw what they were charging me with, I wouldn't have been able to look in it anyway. Um, but if I had an encyclopedic knowledge of the law in my head and threw it back at them, maybe they would have 
not kept charging me, but I think that they just in their eyes did not consider me anything but like, you know, the person who was filming them said that they could make their own publicity afterwards or something, which whatever, they can think whatever they want. It's not true. And he's like, well, you need to wrap it up in a couple of minutes, get your stuff off of here. And so by the time they decided to arrest everyone, um, pretty much all of the stuff was gone off of that side of the street, off of that side of the property and was moved over across the street on the other side of where those black and whites are, which is, which was what we were told was the public park and which at least from the charges seemed to be considered a public park in the law's eyes. Um, I think it was kind of a douchey thing that the occupiers did by putting the tents up on top of the native grass lawn, you know, that sort of brushy looking grass area. It's not like a lawn, but like native brush plants that are made to look like little tufts of lawn here. They put the tents right on top of those, which I would have just put it on the concrete if it was me, but you know, I'm not them. Oh, okay. That's the same video. So now this is, this is what I wanted to document. This is after all the stuff has been moved, like you couldn't see it as I panned past it there, but definitely when you get over here, this is all the stuff that was on the other side. This is how all the, the Googlers leave the bicycles when they're done with them at the end of the day. There's just tons of them like littered all over the property there. So this uh, heavier set guy here with the uh, suspenders, he's the guy who is one that they did not arrest. <coughs> And he was allowed to get all of our information to give to the NLG, our names and birth dates and social security numbers or whatever, whatever, whatever he asked for. Uh, so he could get in, get uh, either a legal representation if we were held long enough or to just like to, to keep, you know, to keep tabs on everybody that was put in so that they had everybody's legal name on how to search for where we were in the system. Um, and then he was allowed to take the majority of the stuff away. Since I had my equipment on my backpack and on my person when they arrested me, that's why my stuff had to go into uh, property holding or wherever they call it in the police department. And that backpack stayed at Mountain View Police Station, even though I and my personal effects, which was my wallet, my keys, and my cell phone, um, were kept with me and taken to county where I was able to get back immediately on my phone, which even though I had them turn it off, I apparently was down to 15% battery and I didn't have much time um, to use it once it once once I got out. But somebody had an external battery that kept me going for a few more hours. Um, I think there's maybe one more shot on the DS DSLR um, and then that leads up to as close as to where my arrest was, which was only caught on live stream. So this is, okay, I know I did get a shot. So that was where the, that's the quad where all the, the occupation was set up. This was for me to make sure that, you know, on the occupier side that it shows that they moved all their stuff and that they were all pre getting prepared to completely leave and take off. And there was all the cops powwowing with each other. And uh, it was shortly after I filmed this pan that, uh, that, the two, I think it was, I think they were both girls. It was at least one girl. And there you see it's Los Altos police, even though we're in Mountain View. Um, it's the rest of the black and white and security. And there's all the stuff completely taken off of official Google property. Um, and over there. And then, do you see everybody? I think they're all powwowing. They're powwowing somewhere over there. I mean, this is still before uh, anybody got arrested. And then. And then that's the last video I have in HD. So the next video, when I piece this together, will be the live stream video uh, of me getting arrested. And with, I guess, the explanation that, like, two of them went over to be arrested. And uh, they sort of told me, like, you know, oh, two are going to go over there to, to be arrested so that we have footage of somebody making a stink or whatever. You know, it was... You know, it was it was part of their publicity stunt, sort of, to to have two people arrested, not to have all of us arrested, but they let me know that that was about to happen and that I should, you know, that I should cover it. So as I was trying to put my longer telephoto lens back on my DSLR, and uh, definitely had the live stream like because that one doesn't have doesn't take, but like turning it back on and hitting the uStream broadcast button uh, to get that one going. And so while I'm holding that, I'm trying to get the get my lens on the DSLR. And before I even had a chance to pull out the second lens, that was when I got nabbed. So you all have seen it here first. That's the uh, exclusive uh, to Occupy Toronto till I put it out in a couple more places. But that was the first broadcast and publicizing of, uh, of the HD footage that I have there. ER, thank you there, bro, for that world premiere. 
I got stills too. Let's see if I can, let's see if we could look at a couple of the stills. We'll flash through those really quickly. Um, yeah, it's a really, really pretty campus. I mean, there's a lot of I mean, those bicycles always trip me out, but um, this is the fountain that goes. Uh, and this is in the car on the way there. That's just San Francisco, showing how the landscape is changing as all these new, you know, condos and overpriced things are being built in all over the city. Um, this is on the way there. This is the first shot I took of the campus. Um, so I'm standing in the public park side there, and uh, you just see them setting up in the blue shirts. Uh, where's my mouse? There we go. That's them setting up there with their blue shirts that said defend the net or defend occupied or defend net neutrality. Uh, there's one of their tables with the anarchy symbol on it. Um, tried to get that with the Google people there. Um, yeah, it's a really pretty campus. There's some of the people I think that were in from Japan's Google offices, probably for the developers conference. Um, one thing I didn't do that I should that I wanted to do while I was there, and I'll probably just go down as a civilian to go check it out is there's the building where they develop the Android stuff in and in the front lawn of it, they have these giant statues of uh, the androids dedicated to each one of the different versions of Android that came out that are named after desserts. So there's like a giant Kit Kat Android and a giant jelly bean filled Android and a giant eclair looking one and a donut looking one. And uh, what was the other one? Gingerbread and an ice cream sandwich. There's like an Android ice cream sandwich statue. But basically, they've got all those out. And somebody said it was just right around the corner that I didn't end up going to. But so, yeah, these are the stills. Um, I pulled out all the ones that were bad shots or, you know, duplicates where I'd taken more than one. Oh, yeah, so that is the garden thing I was talking about. And let me see a little bit later. Yeah, so I tried to get close up of all the security guards as they were, like, filming us. Wait, did that guy have an iPhone? No, 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 that's definitely Google's because it's got the little barcode on it. I was like, wait, a Google guy using an iPhone? Nope, that's their official. That's probably Motorola, I'd guess, because they own Motorola for a bit now that they sold it to Lenovo. Um, this Google employee getting one of the flyers. There's uh, Mr. Clark Sullivan. Oh, I missed that, brother. What, you missed Clark? Yeah, I spent a good 16 days with him in the end of January, uh, February, and uh, uh, 14 days in Brooklyn and New York, and two days in Baltimore. Oh, yeah. I, have I been to Baltimore? I don't think I've been to Baltimore yet. Well, that's where he's originally from when he, uh, he grew up. There. He was born in Germany, but he grew up in Baltimore uh, and stuff, and uh, yeah, it was great. You know, and he's got the Peace House in D.C. And, uh, yeah, I know at some point um, he's going to get rid of that wheelchair and he's going to do some. Oh, yeah, uh, he doesn't need it anymore. He just uses it because it's easy for him to have a quick seat and to and he's got the mount for his camera on it. So he uses it as like a tripod and just something easy to, to be able to sit down. And um, But, yeah, he gets up and he walks fine now. Yeah, uh, no, I, so I know. This, dem this demonstrates here how receptive a lot of the you know, ninety five percent of the employees, and that doesn't mean that the other five percent were like, "What are you doing here?" kind of stuff. They were just like indifferent. But ninety five percent of the employees were pretty cool about everything that was going on. And you see them. I mean, look how many of them took flyers. I mean, if you're on a public street and you're tr just handing out information flyers about whatever you're protesting or or supporting or whatever, you know, a good ninety five percent of the people won't even take your information. They'll just look at you funny. Like all of these kids were really receptive to to taking the information and were thanking. The people for being there and trying to trying to trying to force google's hand to be a little more proactive like they were not received badly except by security who it's their job to be suspicious of anybody that shows up without permission i'm sure um so here's the free and open internet garden of, a garden of disclosure and i think i got some close-ups so yeah you see like chemtrails organ energy so there's basically two topics on each one galactic cycles and the Arcticurians, I have no idea what the Arcticurians are. Black holes, the now moment, uh, crystal energy, Reiki healing. Uh, let's see what some of the other ones say. Mother Mary and Quan Yin, uh, the great central sun and paradigm shift, Martin Luther King Jr., John F. Kennedy. <coughs> Just like all either paranormal stuff and uh, conspiracy stuff and... Or open source things. This one says Ubuntu in the metaphysical sciences. Uh, just a lot of random, you know, things that are alternative, I guess, is sort of what the point of it is. Like uh, Angela Davis and Noam Chomsky over here. Um, 
Yeah, there's a close-up of it. The chakras in that picture. Uh, what is this? Atlantis and Lemuria. I don't know what Lemuria is. Indigenous culture, consciousness, wormholes. Uh, what is that? Toroidal fields like the Taurus. Like uh, that would be the... Uh, uh, 11, 11, 11 was when that guy released that movie. It wasn't the Zeitgeist movie. It was the other one. Um, the guy, the one that talks about free energy and like all of it is uh, relates to the toroidal, uh, you know, the toroidal shape of energy of the earth. I forget, I forget the name of the movie, but it came out on 11, 11, 11. What do you need? Uh, need Tupperware. Any Tupperware? Small Tupperware for soup? Not, not that one. Okay. about this anything else uh, you have crackers anything else all right all right oh right. so there's the garden um a couple of different shots thrive uh, spirits has thrived the movie fox news versus the internet uh depend on us so. oh boy the movie was called thrive Oh, Thrive, that's it, yeah. Did you tell them about our local station? Oh, so our, our sort of sole ally in the, in the mainstream uh, local television here throughout Occupy had been usually the, the Channel 2 here, which uh, ironically was a Fox News, or not Fox News, but a Fox network affiliate, um, even though they were owned by Cox Communications, which is another corporation, but because they were always an independent station before, when Cox bought them, they let them basically still run their network the way they, their TV station the way they wanted to. Um, so our, you know, the, the, the people who treated us the most fair in the, in the local affiliate news had been Channel 2, but just uh, a few months ago and taking full effect this week, um, Fox Corporation has bought our Fox affiliate, and so now it will become one of the generic My Fox 2 channels, like is rampant the rest of the country so they will not have full editorial control over their news anymore and we may have lost our only like fair shake on the on the local news here i hope that doesn't happen but i talked to my friend who's a camera guy for them um that i met like the, a couple of days before the raid on oakland and we've been in contact ever since and he's a really cool guy um he's, he's very worried about what's about to happen to their news department there thanks a lot for that rupert murdoch the fucker. I think it was specifically, you know, I think they were targeted specifically because they had been sort of lenient towards us, and you know, not not every single report because some reporters do their own thing, but you know, that was the liberty they had was for the reporters to report how they wanted to, and it was actually the first night that I went to Occupy Oakland to uh, the Friday before the Sunday they were raided. Um, that I met the guy who, who's become my friend, the camera guy. And he's like, are, you know, I talked for like an hour and he's like, are you going to be hanging out here? Because uh, Frank's going to come down. Um, he's been wanting to come down here because he's been reporting from behind the anchor desk for a month on Occupy Oakland. But he's never like, you know, actually made it down here. And now that they're under threat of eviction, he wants to make sure that he sees what the place actually was, you know, with his own eyes before it's gone. Um, you know, it's a, None of the other like TV anchor people that you know the, the talking heads on the news like I'd never seen any of the other ones actually come down and come to any of the camps because they wanted to actually see what it was like they're content to just report the news from behind their desk and never actually see what they're talking about and this guy like you know had had the 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 wherewithal to actually want to know what what he's been reporting on and to hear whose side he should be believing and so i was the one that got to give that anchor like the, his tour of occupy oakland even though it was my first night there but i knew i knew the logistics of how the camps worked from rainbow gatherings first and and two from how i'd been seeing occupy san francisco run um so i sort of explained to him how all the different parts were working and like you know, anytime that the city's saying all this nonsense about rats and everything, it's like they didn't give a shit about the rats before the, before the campers were here. You know, like wh why weren't they exterminating the rats and calling it a health a health health and safety issue because they're there every other day of the year. You know, it's all just a subterfuge to to go out. All right. Uh, so there's Kyle, uh, the garden. There's the first time the cops show up. This is still when they're first informing the smiley cop who you saw earlier in the video. Uh, this is still before, before. This is how the, how the other Google employees were thinking that it was hilarious that, they were, that there was protesters there and they were all getting their picture taken with them in the background. They thought it was fun. Um, I mean, you just see the big smiles on their faces. They were all cool. 
um, taking pictures of it, smiling, smiling, smiling. Uh, oh, here. So these are the shots that I think would make like great postcards and stuff like, you know, op occupied Google headquarters there. There, there you go. Tents, got some wide shots. There you go. There's a good one. Occupy Google. All right, there's them. Occupied Google. Holding down the tarp that's going to blow away. There's some people. So I don't know if those were just people in the park or if they were employees after they were done playing Frisbee in the background. Then there's two of our people just hanging out. I mean, it was such a nice day. It was so warm. You and me study. Oh, speaking of that, uh, we never called the people to, to get on the, the third leg of the study. I found the paper that worked the other day. I'll call them on uh, tomorrow, I guess. Uh, oh, and I don't, well, you don't do Twitter so much, D, but uh, I can, I have to find it. Um, I can give the email address or at least, um, what is the study called? Something activism, real activism. Um, but basically, the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil is doing a study on activism and social media. And I know they sent it out to pretty much everybody I know on Twitter. Um, but they're needing people to participate in how social media uh, works in integrating stuff into activism nowadays. And so basically, to, I mean, they want to do interviews. They, they'll do them by phone or Skype or however they're going to do them, I guess. Like, we don't have to go down to Brazil, even though I'd love to if they pay for it. But I'm sure they don't have the budget for that. Uh, but Rio, here they're, I come. Yeah, they're doing interviews. And uh, the other aspect of it is it's basically just a, a Twitter app. Um, you know, like a, a plugin for Twitter that you just install that will allow them to monitor your 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 public um, tweets back and forth in, in the course of your stuff, and that that will go into their analytics to figure out um, how your how your your social media is influencing how you work as an activist. Um, so it looks like a really good study. Um, I know they wrote me back and then sent me a link. Let me see if I can find it. Do 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 do. Yeah, post it on the live chat. All right, I need to probably sign into my other account here. My clot score jumped up in the last few days. Surprise, surprise. Uh, it will be five, where's, there we go. To this address. You didn't see that, did you? Password. There we go. Oh, no, Gmail, they're spying on me. Okay, here we go. From Twitter. Oh, and I forgot to write that guy back, the London reporter. Okay. Interview. Janine De La Vega, Channel 2. Here we go. Okay, and for any reason you prefer not to talk over Skype. Okay, so it is supposed to be over Skype. Okay, many thanks for getting in touch. We'd like to talk to you and get a sense of how you use Twitter to communicate about your political activism. Attaches an information sheet with details about the project and how we see your participation in it. If you find the time to go through and have any questions, we'll gladly respond to them. If you're ready to speak with us, please let me know when, day, and time. It would be good for you to arrange an interview. Dan and I, Marco, are fairly flexible in terms of time, so just pick a date and time and we can do a Skype thing. should take no more than a half an hour to 40 minutes. Uh, there's their things. They have an uh, also, as a last resort, we have an IRC channel, or we can do a DCC, which is a direct computer connection uh, over IRC, which does it, which is non-public. Um, we'd rather have an audio-video interview, but it's okay if you prefer to talk over chat, if you're that paranoid about stuff like this. Uh, serious Activism. So that's the Twitter account, uh, which if you go at Serious Activism, I'm pretty sure is their thing. Let me check and verify that. Twitter.com slash Serious activism and resolving i'm pretty sure that's her twitter account ah. no well if that's not it what was their twitter account then damn it because i would like to get them some more people because it seems really cool that they're doing it another quick follow-up to our previous message we are free to talk to you any day and time in our convenience monday through friday this week drop us a line here with better availability Okay, so they did not mention their Twitter thing. Shoot. Well, wait, I know that for sure. Serious activism 
research. ECA, University of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Okay, so here's the page. It's not showing up their Twitter account on the search, but if you look up serious activism on Google, it just says one word, serious activism, it, or I guess even if it's two words, you'll see ECA, Twitter API. So that's their uh, the plugin, I think, where they'll just monitor your stuff. So they talk about all the stuff here. It's, a, it's an attempt to understand how social media is changing grassroots movements. We believe that all politi that political activism has changed significantly, significantly from a representative hierarchical and party-based system. And Dee, you may you may want uh, to chime in with them and, and try to get them to incorporate what Livestream has done in, in the form of social media's uh, interaction with uh, grassroots Can movements. Can you post that link on the live chat? Yeah. Um, cop copy and... There's my live chat. Paste. And I'll 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 open it now. Yeah, and sure, yeah, I'm sure they'd like to hear from you too. I mean, they, they just want as many people as possible for the uh, for for this for this uh, study that they're doing. Um, we're fascinated by the ways people can be politically active active without engaging or supporting multi-party democracies. This this interest was stoked by social movements like the Indignados, Occupy, and Gezi. We started this project to investigate the number and diversity of Twitter users that participated in multiple political hashtags in the past five years. We looked at a group of 150 political hashtags to examine the activity levels of the overlapping of users across multiple protests. Political activists rely on word of mouth to spread their messages. Traditionally, these were channeled through personal relationships. By contrast, we are finding that the number of retweets between users that do not follow each other is actually consistently higher than retweets between reciprocally connected users. We found that a growing number of Twitter users who engage in multiple political events, in fact, that seven, in fact, 17 percent of users that tweeted messages with the hashtag Free Iran, 3 percent of the hashtag Free Venezuela, 15 percent with the hashtag Jan 25, January 25th, which is my birthday, and 6% uh, with the hashtag Spanish Revolution were also people who tweeted messages with the hashtag Occupy Wall Street. This shows the considerable level of cross-participation cross of users dedicated to political activism around the world. With that in mind, we set up this project to interview users that actively participate or comment on political movements happening around the globe in a number of different languages. In the next months, we will be inviting Twitter users that are very active to join us in this project. Uh, we see the underlying network of activism is very diverse and international with users coming from countries like the U.S., U.K., France, Germany, Brazil, Portugal, Palestine, and Tibet, but our findings to date raise many questions about this apparent sea change in political activism. Answers to these questions can only come from the activists themselves. The Serious Activism Project is led by researchers Marco Toledo Bastos and Dan Merkea. Uh, this is an academic, nonprofit, non-governmental, non-partisan project dedicated to understanding the shifting dynamics of politics. We plan to interview key political activists willing to share their thoughts and some of the questions of our project uh, and answer some of the questions that our project is throwing up. Uh, if you arrived at this page, chances are you've been invited to the pilot project. We hope you're excited as we are about the prospects of understanding the networked architecture of politics. In due course, we will share our own results with you. If you have any questions, please mail us at uh, ambastos or dan.mercia at gmail.com. We hope to talk to you soon. And then they've got their little, uh, blow it up here a little bit. And they've got their little chart here on uh, the cross-pollination of uh, hashtags between people on Twitter. So, I mean, I think it seems like a fascinating and worthwhile project, and I'm definitely stoked to, uh, to participate in it. Probably next week I'll give them an interview, and then they'll ask me, I'm sure, to, to, to plug something into Twitter that will let them monitor the kind of stuff that I tweet. And I don't see this being any sort of honeypot either, so <laughs> they seem to be on the up and up. No, that sounds fascinating. Yeah, you're right. I don't use Twitter a lot. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm a Facebook expert, even though I've had Facebook problems of late. Uh, but you, but you, you, may, you, may, you may have them like sort of shift the focus on maybe one of their next studies. Like maybe even though they're studying Twitter this time, talking to you might spur them into considering more of the live stream stuff on the next one. Well, sure. I'll, I'll definitely contact them and uh, tell them you sent me and uh, all that and yada, yada, yada. And no, I will. Uh, uh, yeah. No, it sounds fascinating. It's great. It I'll mention you and then also mention, because, uh, you know, Arthur, who was on um, my podcast with you uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, you know, he's been part of helping the CEO of Ustream, like, start their 501c3 nonprofit towards, like, giving uh, enterprise accounts to all the people who are doing stuff for social change with their live stream. So I could probably hook him up with the guy from, U hook them up with the guy from Ustream 
And I don't know if you have contacts at livestream.com if they if those people are in because I know that they were giving free accounts too to to occupations. So back they, like, back in the so day, but no longer putting their two cents in on it on it as well. The people up at their corporate. Yes, back in the day, they were giving premium accounts. We have one here, but they're they're not doing that anymore. Oh well, see, Ustream has been committed to it, and it's only recently that they've that they've set it in stone that like now, if you're doing something for social change, just send them an application, and as long as you know you're not you're not like the Koch brothers uh, in disguise, like they 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 seem to be willing to do it for pretty much anybody. So yeah, that's the study I'm going to be participating in. I think it seems pretty cool. It was months ago that they first sent it to me, and I totally spaced out on it. And I'm I'm grateful that they didn't forget about me and sent it to me again like a week or two ago. And I was like, oh shit, yeah, thanks for reminding me because I forgot. Anyway, your your twapper your twapier keeper. What is that? Is that the uh, is now called Hootsuite Archives? Oh oh. <laughs> That's basically uh, Hootsuite is, I think it is owned by Twitter now, but it's uh, sort of a way to, to time when your tweets go out, like to basically cache them and have them go out at certain times. Like if if I happen to be, or, like I don't do this, but if I happen to be organizing a protest specifically, like, and I know that I'm going to be busy during it, I can set up all the tweets that I want to go out at a certain time and it will broadcast them from Hootsuite. There's other, uh, there's other like Android apps that'll do that where you can set up specific tweets to be broadcast at a certain to go out at a certain time um, and it also keeps an archive of all your tweets but so does twitter if you go into your settings there's somewhere where you can request i think it comes out as a pdf or something or no maybe it's an xml or you may even have a choice of what format but you could request it to to basically zip up all your tweets that you've ever tweeted and they just set it aside for you and you can go and download it it's not it's not a very big thing either because it's basically all text um Twitter API. So I think this must be, if I click here, this must be the thing that says, oh, well, it's in Portuguese. All right. Uh, I thought I had a translator extension built into here. I guess I don't. But let's see what it says. Translate. Of course, I'm using a Google thing again here again. Detect language. Uh, Twitter is divided into three distinct APIs. Okay, so the main challenges were at this early stage to obtain reliable data and ensure a steady flow of a large number of bits. To do this, to connect our platform to your Twitter Keeper program and use IPs included in a list of exceptions, whitelisted IPs is special. So basically, it allows them to monitor your tweets and give them the data necessary for the analysis. So basically, they're using the Twitter API, which is the application programming interface for... It's basically the public way that people can write programs to interface with a certain platform. So they're using the, the, the Twitter interface to integrate with their Hootsuite, which I guess is your Twapper Keeper, but which is now owned by Hootsuite, uh, to be able to collect and monitor and analyze the tweets that you put out when you give them permission to. I think that's basically all that says. But yeah, so it's like little effort from you if you want to participate because it'll just be able to automatically do your stuff and I think only see your public tweets. I'm sure that they won't be able to see your direct messages. Um, I'm pretty sure they won't be able to. Uh, I must have somehow hit something that got me into this uh, Portuguese version because... Oh, there we go. English. There we go. English and Portuguese. The collected data includes basic information about users and messages, tweets, and the full network of users, messages, and clustered along with given hashtags. So they're only monitoring you when you, it seems like only when you tweet with certain hashtags will it come up, which I don't always remember to put hashtags in this stuff, so hopefully it's a little more comprehensive than that. <laughs> the data is necessary in order to map the network topo topology created by the hashtags. So it seems like they are directly only monitoring stuff you use hashtags with. Application program interface, namely streaming, search, and REST API. I don't know what the REST one would be. That are not fully compatible with one another. The search API is currently the most important API for statistical analysis, followed by the streaming API, which is like your timeline that keeps flooding in in a stream, I think. Yep, so that's them, and I think I'm about done talking for the night. <laughs> well, that was a lot. Everything right? Yeah. Did we miss anything? 
we talked about everything, your court date, uh, everything that happened that day, the uh, National Day of Actions coming up. Uh, 15th yeah. and then possibly a boycott of Google on the 10th, which I'm unclear on. Um, I'll have to look that up and I'll tweet about it or something if I find it. But I, I heard them talking about at, incorporating a, a protest of Google for them arresting the people. But I mean, you know, f for all intents and purposes, like I think that the cops were very accommodating and there was plenty of opportunity for people to leave without being arrested. It seemed to be like everybody's choice to not have left at the time that they were left. I, my major issue is that they had no right to arrest me and that I'm going to fight that with tooth and nail. Um, but yeah, I mean, the people who got arrested, they wanted to be arrested for the most part. I mean, even if they, they sort of were moving their stuff and on their way out, like, you know, if they really did not want to be arrested, they would have left much earlier when they were asked to be le to, to leave. But I, I think it was always part of their intention to have, you know, to bring attention to the cause, which is what a lot of activists do, is to, to, to be arrested for the cause. And that way they make sure that they got media attention and they got it. And, you know, I'm sort of glad that I was there and, you know, half glad that I got arrested, but sort of still pissed that I did because I shouldn't have been. But, you know, if it wasn't for that live stream footage, I think that was what made a lot of the journalists and tech blogs actually pick up on it. Like, So I became in integral in that part of it, at least. And uh, well, maybe switch back to camera. Uh, quit share screen. Oh, yeah. Um, stop. Is it back? And I'm almost to the end of my Coke supply. <laughs> oh, this is what I kept forgetting to do while I was doing all this. Not that I would have shut up much from it, but where's my real lighter? It, it, it seems like your kitchen's a little cleaner than three weeks ago when we last interviewed you. Oh, there's less dishes. Yeah, all the dishes are actually caught up with. I think there's a mug there and a bowl in the sink, and uh, and an ice and an ice tray that needs wash. But other than that, uh, my soup from earlier, which I wasn't going to wash while I was on, and uh, a couple of teacups, teacups, and a cocktail glass. Patty wants to know the name of your camera that you live stream with. That I live stream with. It was the Samsung or the. Uh, yeah, the Samsung, this is a Galaxy Cam 1, the first generation of them. They're up to, like, I think the third version now, second or third. Um, the numbers are the... No, yeah, it's written somewhere on here. Um, it's definitely on my... In my Bluetooth permissions. Hold on. Bluetooth. Do, 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 do. The exact model number is the... EK-GC100, so Galaxy Cam 100. Um, and that was, you, she saw it. She was here when Vlad stayed at my house for that week. Um, she actually crashed here the first night um, in my bed with me. Ooh, bow, chicka, wow, wow. Uh, but yeah, we all crashed here that first night that Vlad, because she got in late on the bus. Vlad came in earlier. Um, and then she made her way here after she came in on the mega bus, I think. Um, and crashed here. But yeah, it's the one that Vlad gave to me. It uh, technically belongs to Global Rev. Um, they also left two laptops here, which I had somebody over a few months ago, and I noticed that my resin, my hard Guy Fox mask, disappeared that night, and one of those two laptops disappeared. The other one, Human has, because he was supposed to make an image of the operating system since they have it on a split, uh, what do you call it, uh, a, a dual boot. So like when you boot up, it says, do you want to run Mac OS? Or do you no, run, Hackintosh. Uh, Hackintosh. Windows. Yeah, yeah, it was a Hackintosh. So one of those two Hackintoshes disappeared and I'm going to track down that kid and beat the shit out of him. Um, but yeah, so one of those got stolen and my Guy Fox mask got stolen and my old uh, HTC Resound that I used to stream with, uh, that, that was I was just using as a Wi-Fi phone when I was at home uh, after I moved away from Verizon over to T-Mobile. Um, that disappeared. Uh, I'm so pissed. That kid like wiped me out somehow, and I did not even notice. I think I took a shower while he was here, and when I came out, like he, you know, oh, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go do do this and this and that, and then that was when I noticed all the shit was gone. Uh, so pissed at him. And I have not seen him since that day, and it's got to be wise because he nabbed a bunch of my shit. So one of those laptops is gone, but luckily he didn't take the Galaxy Cam. 
because uh, that thing is actually really cool. I tether it to my phone, and it gives me that zoom capability, which is why it looks like I'm right up on those cops arresting the two girls at the beginning. Um, but I'm actually like zoomed in probably about 15 times optical at that point. And that's the rarest thing in live streaming because, you know, they don't use, uh, live streamers don't use Zoom as much as they should. I love it. I mean, well, usually, no usually like you're doing Ustream at least with, with your camera, I mean, with your camera phone, and your camera phone has a fixed focus and maybe an optical Zoom capability when you're, when you're using the, the, the cam software, like the regular camera and the regular video capture, you know, but the, the, the manufacturer or just the default Android camera like allows you to do a digital zoom where you do the little pinchy out thing to zoom in, but but you have no ability to do that when you're in the Ustream app. The most you can do usually is to tap the screen to focus, and that's about it. Like you can't zoom in. You've got to run up on the people and be doing this thing in their face to get up closer. Um, so that Galaxy Cam is the only is the only uh, is the only thing that I know of that that's running Android that has a zoom that you can actually zoom in with an optical zoom that doesn't just distort and blow up and uh, lose your resolution um, as you as you zoom in digitally. And I'm sure the mic uh, seems a little bit better on that. Possibly, um, I know there's a there's a mini jack, you know, like a mini phono jack uh, thing on it, but I think that's only for headphones to listen with, like you know, to like listen to the radio or some whatever internet radio or whatever you happen to be listening to your videos. I don't think it has a mic because if it did have a mic, I've got the boom from my uh, from my DSLR, which I was talking about that earlier, and what that is is uh, it's Rode, and Rode makes a lot of good equipment, microphones and such. And uh, it's not sitting, it's not directly in reach here, is it? Uh, must be in the other room. Um, but it's it's a boom mic that sits on top in the, I guess they call it a cold shoe, uh, when you're not using it as a flash, the hot shoe on the top. Yep. Um, now, it'd be nice well, to... I showed this off. This is the DSLR that I shot all that stuff with. It's the Nikon D5100. Oh, and it was left on, but usually, yeah, there's still battery left in it. No SD card inserted, which means there's no space, on, there's no internal memory on it. Uh, but yeah, the, the boom mic sits right in the hot shoe there. It's basically a long microphone, and then the wire goes off to the side and goes in the into the mic jack here. And it's the mic itself is like there's a little two circular sort of frames that are that are on the hard plastic that attaches to here. But what, uh, we call what it the pistol grip. Are, it's a pistol grip. Yeah, and then so then it's basically the microphone itself is suspended in that circle, like there's there's the rod in the middle, and then it's suspended by four rubber bands so that it's not actually attached to anything and it sort of wiggles. But what that allows it to do is not get the mechanical noise from the autofocus as the autofocus is, is turning. Um, cause and you got a wind sock on that? Like you hear it e, 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 whenever it focuses and it's awful. And do you got a wind sock on that for uh, wind or, uh, or, or, yeah, wind, or a Ryko? Yeah, the sponge is built onto the boom. I, li I like those uh, Zeppelin type, uh, they call them Rykotes in the film biz. Uh, those are really nice to really, really filter out really strong winds. And uh, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you know you know what I really, really like? If you ever get a chance, <laughs> uh, Sennheiser has about, I don't know, it's, it seems like it's about three and a half inches, maybe 10 <laughs> centimeters long, the size of your middle, fi your, your pointing finger. Uh, and it's about that size. And uh, it's about three, 350, but it's a little shotgun. It's a cardioid shotgun. It's absolutely fucking stellar. Yeah, but yeah, you, it has a little pistol grip yeah. and a really kick-ass Sennheiser windsock so that it, it, it works really good. It's really short, and it's, it's, it's Sennheiser. Let me see if I can pull up a uh, road video mic at Amazon. Yeah, most of theirs are about 200, 300 bucks. Mine was the cheapest one I could find, but it still works really, really good. Shotgun mic, is that what it was called? Let me yeah, see. Sennheiser Mini Shotgun. Road microphones, shotgun mics. Uh, let's see, Special Officer Video Mic Pro. No, mine was just called Video Mic. And I think this is it, but 149. I paid 99 for mine, but I think this is the newer model of it. It's just called the Rode Video Mic. Um, 
Oh, they've, got some, they've got some sort of new suspension on it because it looks a little different than this. It's arriving soon. We confirmed with the road that more of these items should be available. Oh, this is from this other company. So let me see if I could do a search to see because this looks like a new version of it. It's got some red plastic on it, which is not the way mine looked. Mine's, and it doesn't have the rubber band thingies like mine does. Oh, here's mine. Road video mic with camera mount. 150 is what this company is selling it for, but... Uh, let me it's copy. probably a cardioid uh, uh, and then I'll put this in the chat and then people can look at it and paste so this is the one that I have from camerachums.com something um, yeah the SKU is video mic in stock they sell it for 150 there I think Amazon had it for I thought it was 99 at Amazon, but I got it at a local store here that actually had it for the same price as Amazon. Yeah, so that one with the red stuff must be a new model because the one because it's the same skew for it, but it looks slightly different and it's not suspended with the rubber bands the same way. It seems to be all suspended on little plastic things. It's a one-half-inch condenser shotgun microphone designed for use with consumer video cameras and personal DSLRs. So condenser means, uh, yeah, you need a battery for it, and so it's got yeah. a little built-in battery, battery lasts forever, though. It lasts like 100 hours or something. Yeah, and it's a built-in uh, preamp, and uh, yeah, I, I saw the the, uh, the shock mount on it, the uh, pistol grip. Yeah, it's really, really nice, and... Uh, uh, the windsock is nice. Uh, one additional tweak that sometimes if it's really windy, you know how you slide the uh, windsock in, you know the back end where you first uh, slide in? It's sort of integrated, like you don't take it off, like it, it's just always on there. Okay, good. So if it doesn't slide off, that's good because sometimes you might want to add a piece of tape right at the end uh, uh, just because sometimes wind sneaks in there, but it's pretty good. I mean, it certainly the best is what's called a rye coat. R Y C O T E. It's like a little Zeppelin, and then it's got a windsock that goes over the Zeppelin. You could be f filming in pretty fucking intense wind, and you don't hear nothing because that Zeppelin rye coat uh, and the windsock really absorb a lot of that. But that that's a Hollywood thing. That's that's expensive enough. Just the pistol grip windsock and uh, the the rye coat and the windsock is uh, pretty expensive, but it's worth it. Rycoat.com slash products. Let's see. That's Cito, not see those zeppelins? They look like a zeppelin for like, but they're they're. We just call them Rycoat because they're they're the best. Oh, my mouse is getting low on battery, and when it does, it starts like doing random clicks. I'm like, wait, I didn't click back like three times. You got a wireless right. mic, eh? Uh, no, the wireless, it's a Bluetooth mouse, and it just starts getting random clicks when it starts to get low. It just sends off random shit. Rycoat Undercovers, Rycoat Inversion, Rycoat Liar Mount, Rycoat Softy, Windjammer. Let's see that. Oh, you're talking, it's, so these are like the sheepskin looking ones. That's what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, the, 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 the Zeppelin part's called the Rycoat, uh, you know, maybe sometimes referred to as the windscreen. And then the what slides over it like a condom, and th there's different sizes. There's the thin fur or the thick fur. The thick fur is for more windier situations. Uh, that's known as the windsock. Uh, traditionally, you know, they might rename it nowadays. Uh, wind jammer number four for WS4 windshield. So it's 175 just for the like sheepskin looking part. Yeah, but that's but you need the rye coat. You need the the windscreen that looks like a zeppelin to put it over. I know. I t I said it's expensive, but man, if you're in windy conditions constantly. That's what you need. But like, you know, you traditionally see them in old uh, Hollywood films or press conferences in the 50s and 60s. Those, those uh, thick uh, rock coats, uh, and, and your mic's off, by the way, uh, is uh, pretty... Uh, 
yeah, uh, yeah. You see him on boom poles traditionally, you know. And yeah, you see him but it's covered water. with the same stuff that, like, all old stage microphones, like whenever you go to a recital or something, they always had those balls on the end of them, and it was that mesh of metal that's covering it. That like the whole, the whole like hot dog. It looks like a, it looks like a big hot dog, basically. Yeah, there's basically three components. There's the 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 shock mount, which is attached to a pistol grip, which is all one thing. Then the Ryko the windscreen, the Zeppelin looking thing slides into that, you lock it in, uh, and there's usually a little hole just for the uh, the mic cable, and, and then there's the wind sock that slides over like a condom, and man, like, rest assured, you're gonna get the best sound, you're gonna eliminate the wind, and always, that's usually for uh, shotgun mics. Uh, they're, they come in different sizes, you know, usually about a foot and a half size and maybe a two and a half foot size for the longer, uh, like say Sennheiser 816 or my favorite mic in the world. It's about a, a foot long. It's the uh, the uh, Sennheiser 416, the most popular film mic of all time, the Sennheiser uh, uh, four, uh, 416. I love that mic. Cool. It's it's known as a cardioid shotgun. It it is the most accurate mic in the world, the Sennheiser 416. It's it's class. They've had it since what maybe the early 70s. It's their best selling mic of all time. But and I know in Toronto you can sometimes get a deal well, for a Sennheiser for okay now this is a big price but it's a great fucking deal. It, uh, you can get it with the uh, pistol grip, the Sennheiser 416 with the preamp because uh, they're powered mics, uh, the rye coat and the really thick windsock for about fifteen hundred, uh, and that's a great fucking deal because they're usually way more, but. But for live streaming and for what you're doing, yeah, that's that's a huge. That's like a foot and a half, and that's pretty thick. Uh, that you know, if you, if you're doing a film shoot, that's what you have, and you can get a special hot shoe. You you could mount it on your camera, but it's huge. Cool. All right. Well, now I'm stoned, and I kind of want to go lay down. <coughs> All right. All righty. So. so thank you, Punk Boy. Any uh, final wrap-up thoughts about your arrest and the fact that it's a shame, it's a fucking crying shame that a civilian journalist doing their job gets arrested in the yeah, land and right. free. Identify. Yeah, that's right. I had a big, long discussion with, with uh, I think, the guy whose name is on the arresting paper, even though you know other people are the ones who put the cuffs on me. But it's the order from one of them and all the people who do whatever that one says, like the, the white shirts and the dark shirts in New York. Um but, like, I had that discussion with him, and I cannot believe he told me to my face, and I was not sure, I'm like, you know, maybe it was a gray area in my head, you know, just from my own legal opinion on what I know of what's supposed to be the law and what's not. And I'm like, I, it, should, it should apply. It should apply. And he's just blatantly lied to me. And with a convincing enough argument that I didn't, you know, I, that I didn't even realize that that was what he was doing. He ran his mojo magic on me. And, uh... I kind of thought it might, I kind of thought it might have been possible, but you know, fuck him that he lied to me, and uh, you know, I guess they're, they're always, always allowed to lie to you, right? Isn't that yeah, what they? It's always, the it? classic good cop, bad cop. You know what you should do? You had an eye opener when you read that section, that subsection of six hundred two. Uh, you should get a T-shirt that says media, and you should have <laughs> that section, that subsection outlined in that T-shirt at the back and front. Well, did, see, this is the first time I've had to deal with any trespassing issue because, you know, I kind of was unsure. And I guess maybe if in hindsight, if I would have looked it up after, because I didn't go into the, f I went really quickly at one point. But the first time they'd taken over 888 Turk, like, you know, when technically you were trespassing because they, they had taken over an abandoned building and it definitely was not their property. Like, you know, I, I wasn't sure at first. And so I think that maybe the first day that they had held it, I didn't go inside, but I think maybe the second day I did, or maybe I went in like when they first took it and like everybody was going in and the media was going through. And because I saw the media going through, I, you know, that was when I realized, Oh, Hey, it was cool for me to be in there too. Like they weren't going to go charge media with trespassing, even though they had videoed their own, you know, their own infraction kind of thing. Like, you know, you're covering the other people that are doing it. So that give, that gives you the right to do it because you're covering, 
you know, what somebody else is doing, even if that means that you're doing it too, you're allowed to because you're documenting the other people doing it. It's basically the eyes of the, of the Constitution. And, uh, you know, he blatantly lied to me and says, no, you're still trespassing, which, okay, yes, I'm still trespassing, but that doesn't mean that it's against the law for me to do when I'm in the course of journalizing. And if this Grayson Amendment passes, and hopefully it does get through, and hopefully douchebag Obama will actually sign it, you know, if he doesn't, it's obvious why. But uh, there's still hope that he'll do something right in the meantime. I, I have very little faith in Obama, but there's always that little part of me that's the part of everybody else that was deceived by him that thinks that he wanted to do the right thing when he got into all this, but it's all the bad people who made him not do the right thing. When the more and more you learn about him, like he'd always had the bad intentions, he was just putting on airs to get elected. Yep. Yep. Anyway. And he's the one that used social media a lot. Yeah, I was watching Dinesh D'Souza. I don't know if you heard about the, the movie that Dinesh D'Souza made about his exploration of Obama's like father. And, you know, because he talked, you know, even in the mainstream, like he talks an awful lot about how his dad is a big influence on what he does and everything. And even wrote that book, you know, Dreams from My Father and, and all this stuff. So this other guy, and he's doing it because he's a conservative sort of douchebag in a, a little bit of a way. And so you can kind of discount some of the stuff, but he's blatant about when he's saying his, his judgmental, you know, right wing kind of rhetoric kind of stuff at it but all the stuff where he's talking about obama's history and all this stuff is like he's not putting a spin on it he's like you know he says he's about what his father does and this is you know this is his father's history and he points out and he you know he's not he's not embellishing uh anything about the father i don't think from from what i got from watching it like when he's embellishing and trying to be derogatory like you can tell it he's really upfront about it and he changes sort of the tone of the way he talks in the movie I mean, he, he writes for Forbes and stuff. He's not like, you know, a, a whack job or anything. Yet when he came up with this conclusion that the only way to explain Obama's position and a lot of the stuff that he's done, because he's done stuff that no other Democrat would do, and like, you know, the, the right explanation of him being a socialist and a communist and all that stuff, that doesn't actually fit his actions. He's like, and what the left seems to claim that he's doing, even though he's doing it sort of differently and him being strong armed into certain things and whatever their excuses are for the things that he's done that, that are, that are bad, you know, that are just bad, whether, you know, what they think his reason for is doesn't fit all of the facts. He's like, the only thing that fits to me is that he's continuing his father's mindset, which is a blatant and a ardent anti-colonialist, like, you know, who's taking from the occupiers sort of, so to speak, and giving it back to the people that, that, that they had sort of, you know, rape their cultures and their societies and stuff. And like, he's like, and that explains Obama's actions on uh, and positions on most of his issues way better than either of the, the right or the left side. He's like trying to present a third thing. And it's weird because I can't completely subscribe to his assumption either because there's a lot of, because if you go with that, then he would be way more on the side of Occupy Wall Street and wouldn't be doing all the stuff that he's doing from the banks unless he's just being an anti-colonialist. But doing it from the political standpoint. And I think it's kind of a weird mesh of both of the ideas that like he's getting some of his anti-colonialist father's agenda out, but at the same time paying back the political favors that he had in garnered from getting up to whatever position to his position. Like he's still got to pay back the shady people he had to work with along the way and is doing things for those people on both sides. And I think that makes a little more sense than him being a stout anti-colonialist, but and so far, it's still, like all of that fits. Like when you take my theory, like, you know, it's sort of a mix of, of, of all that. And, and that's the only thing that fits is that he's paying back favors and he's still pulling off an anti-colonialist attitude, which I don't disagree with. Like they, they, he sort of talks about him bad for being an anti-Zionist, but like <laughs> that's not a bad thing to me. Um, any, any people who, st who start out with the belief that they're the chosen people and everybody else is secondary – yeah, I'm going to have an issue with those with that group. <laughs> you know, that they're better than, than anyone else just by birthright. And it's like, no, I don't think it works like that. Consciousness is collective and we're people by, by the things that go on in our head. And we're only, we're only that because of the, uh, the influence of the outside stuff. So that doesn't hold up. You're not better than everybody else. Sit down. <laughs> nice. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is, we're reaching the three and a half hour mark, by the way. Oh. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun, eh? And yeah, uh, now that I'm showing it was just flying a little differently, but woo! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the way I, I have PTSD now from the police, man. 
No, uh, PTSD from the cops from other times, but I don't think, I'll, I'll have a little bit of shock. Like I, I mentioned that they put me in a cell like right next to where the dude who was screaming about, you know, uh, beating the crap out of and, and stabbing a bunch of faggots bef- is what, why he was in there. Like somehow I'll have to integrate that into the lawsuit. Like <laughs> what? So you asked me if I was gay so you could put me next to somebody who was spouting about having just stabbed a gay person like before that? That's bad. Yeah. Anyway. Right. That's really good. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, bro, and all the best to you, and uh, keep on live streaming, bro. Uh, love your work, and it's a shame that you had to uh, be arrested in the line of, because uh, we live streamers, we civilian journalists, we're the last and, and, defenders and of show, the truth. My live show on Friday, too, even if you don't catch it live, like it's always on archive. There's seven episodes so far, this will be eight, and I think for my tenth episode, I'm going to try to just pick a couple of topics and make one long two hour audio mix thing of my, my, uh, I think it's transformative. So I don't think it falls under the same type of copyright things, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I pirate a bunch of audio from YouTube and I just mix it all up. However, however, the, uh, the energies like flow that day. Like I, I have no concept of what I'm going to do before I sit down a couple hours before, before the show starts and just start grabbing things Sometimes I'll pick the clips ahead of time, but I won't know. I won't have any idea how I put it together. And then just as I'm doing it, it just comes to me like, "Oh, this would go good here." And I I downloaded that clip, so I'll put this here. And sometimes it comes out really perfectly. Like I think the one that I did for Stanley Cohen was like, I didn't realize how perfect it was at the time till I went back and listened to it, and it goes like, you know, Martin Luther King talking about something. Uh, it's mainly from his last speech where he's talking a lot of anti-war stuff and how dissenters should not be categorized as, as traitors. And uh, after he would talk about each part of that, and it would cut to like Stanley doing exactly that thing and speaking out against war when nobody else is and addressing the president of Egypt, the, the military president of Egypt, um, with that council of international lawyers that uh, gave that big press conference. Nice. Uh, but that one came out awesome. It was like, King speaks about something, and then De- Stanley demonstrating that, and then King speaks about something else, and then how Stanley was doing that. Because all of, I mean, all the Zionists hate him. They hate him vehemently. He's got hate pages all over the web. <laughs> and the horrible articles that the Zionists and the, and the pro-Israeli people write about him, he is so not that evil person. He is like one of the sweetest people. A little militant, but, you know, we need that in a lawyer sometimes. <laughs> Yes, absolutely, and all, all the best to you, bro. Uh, thank you. Thank you, and uh, yes, your radio show is tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to midnight, is it? Or is it 11 p.m. Eastern? Uh, it's, it's 11, 11 Eastern. I started 8 here, and it goes from 8 to 10. Uh, if you go to blogtalkradio.com slash wake da fook up, and I'm getting a phone call. Um, and he'll put a link to that in the chat, and I've got to get my phone call. Talk to you guys later. Thank you, bro. Bye. Yes, yes. That was Punk Boa. Okay. There we go. And, uh, yes, uh, that was Punk Boa. And, uh, always a blast. Always a blast talking, uh, to punk boy and uh, hopefully it doesn't freeze but I was wrapping it up uh, okay it froze uh, sometimes happens and uh, yes we will just uh, leave it at uh, that and uh, thank you everybody for watching uh, this was a great uh, interview uh, as I started off the show uh, it's totally um, a shame the context. I know we live. Uh, we interviewed uh, Punk Boy uh, about three weeks ago, and uh, it's a shame the context of of it that it was because of his arrest. Uh, but it's always a blast uh, live streaming uh, an interview with Punk Boy. Uh, he's been around since the good old days of Occupy, and uh, what can I say, folks? But thank you. And this is Dee Shanger. I'm a mod and live stream director here at Occupy Toronto since day one on Saturday, October 15th, 2011. And Patty, yar! All the best on your uh, court case. Hey now there, Patty. Yar, thank you, Spirit, for watching. Thank you, everyone, on the live chat. Rise, thank you so, so much for... Uh, 
Miranessa, Global Rev, and uh, Yar Yar, and Yar, and Yar. And as we live streamers never say bye, but rather peace out and see you on the live chat. Ciao, folks. Thank you. Yar. Hey now, Patty.